two presentations and then the sister cities swearing in. So there'll just be an abbreviated time, abbrevi abbreviated time for announcements in between. Uh, first up, Council Member Parker, you're up. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Um, we've got a resolution here uh, expressing appreciation for the employees of the Nashville Electric Service and recognizing April 17th, 2022 as Lineman Appreciation Day. I know that we have um, a representative of the NES workers here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hello. Sorry. Thank you so hello. much for joining us yes. today. Um, so we're going to read this off, and if you'll just stand up here with us, uh, okay. we would we would appreciate sure. it. And sure. can you tell us your name, please? Deidre Grant. Deidre Grant? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Will you all help me read this resolution off recognizing our linemen? All right. Um, whereas each day, Nashville Electric Service employees serve the public by keeping the power on across Nashville and Davidson County. And whereas these employees work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year through severe weather and catastrophic events, including tornadoes, derechos, ice storms, and heat waves. And whereas... NES employees are part of a profession that is steeped in personal and professional tradition, working together as organized labor for over 50 years and creating one of the best power companies in the country to work for. And whereas April 17th, 2022 is recognized nationally as Lineman Appreciation Day. And whereas NES linemen put their lives on the line every day, working in dangerous conditions in order to keep electricity flowing and... Whereas NES linemen and NES employees deserve recognition for their hard work and dedication to supporting electric infrastructure throughout the metropolitan government of Nashville and Davidson County. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metro Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as expressing appreciation for Nashville electric service employees who work tirelessly each day to keep electricity flowing in Nashville and Davidson County. The Metropolitan Council further goes on record as recognizing April 17th, 2022 as Lyman Appreciation Day. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Here. We can get a photo with yes. you and me and the council members if you'd like. Yes, we can. And if you'd like um, to say something, you can also say something. Like you say Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next presentation is Council Member Roten, who is not in the room. Um, it's always for the best when we don't have to turn his microphone on, but hopefully he'll arrive at some point. So we can go to announcements. Council Member Bradford. Thank you, Pro Tim. I have a couple of announcements um, for members of District 13 in the community. Do you love kittens? Or do you love books? Well, join Metro Animal Care Control's new Kitten Reading Club. Build reading skills, spend social time with kittens, and help animals find their forever homes. There are several dates upcoming. The first is going to be May 21st, June 14th, June 25th. If you want to sign up, check out their Facebook page, uh, Metro Animal Care Control. My second announcement is our beautification commissioner has set up a cleanup event at Hamilton Creek Park on Saturday, June 18th at 9 a.m., uh, if you want more information, you can check out the District 13 Facebook page or my Facebook page to sign up for that event. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Suara. Thank you, Pro Tem. This is just to remind everyone that the budget conversation uh, on Facebook uh, started last Saturday. If you missed it with uh, uh, 
uh, Councilmember Mendes looking at the budget as a whole. Uh, you can watch it on my Facebook Live. But this Saturday, we'll be talking to NES and SEIU about the MMPS budget. Next Saturday, we'll be talking to MMPD and COB. So I implore everyone to check every Saturday, 3 to 4, on Facebook Live, on my Facebook page for discussion on the budget. You can ask questions and be a part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Rutan has arrived, Don't, but it's good for a good cause. So we'll go to him for a presentation. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a, a presentation of a resolution for the Donaldson Christian Academy Wildcats state football team. So if they would come up. sit here and try to take credit um, for him being so good since I used to run by him on the streets of Hermitage Hills when we were 10 years old scoring touchdowns and uh, he just watched me run by him so but uh, I don't think that was it he went on to play football and went to college coached he's coached several um, state championship teams with different teams and so in this year most I think was most impressive was two years ago y'all remember um, DCA was almost destroyed by the tornado <clears throat> he could have easily you know just checked out for a couple of years and try to get everything back together the next year they're right back in the state championship and they won it so uh, I think it's very impressive so um, congratulations we have a resolution I'd like to read it and then uh, I've got several other folks here that would like to participate too whereas the Donaldson Christian Academy Wildcat football team in its 39th edition had a storybook ending and whereas led by 15 seniors this group came from a winless season as freshmen to winning DCA's fourth state championship after earning a Around a first round by in the playoffs by winning the region. The Cats took on arch rival Friendship Christian in the quarterfinals with a 47 0 win and a dominant performance. And whereas the Wildcats were rated as underdogs as they traveled to Jackson to take on University School of Jackson after a close first half, the Cats pulled away with an explosive offensive performance with a 42 14 win, earning DCA's seventh trip to the state finals. And. <laughs> the state championship Blue Cross Bowl match DCA against their regional rival, the Nashville Christian School Eagles football team. The Cats had beaten the Eagles in a defensive rain-soaked game by a score of 7-3 in their last regular season game of the year. And whereas the Wildcats were determined to prove their first win over the number one ranked team from Bellevue was not a fluke, DCA was well prepared and ready on, the, on, on a gorgeous day in Chattanooga as they soundly beat Nashville Christian 31-7, earning a fourth gold ball for the trophy case for DCA. And whereas it was a remarkable season for the Wildcats, which coincided with DCA's 50th anniversary year, even as the community was celebrating its football state title, the ongoing work on campus was moving forward. DCA had an incredible outpouring of support from the community in the years after the tornado, which has proven to be a remarkable time of restoration, recovery, and excitement. Preschool through fifth grade students were able to move back into their classroom wing on the main campus in January of this year, and whereas DCA Strong still resonates in the midst of tremendous successes happening on campus during the 2021-22 school year, with the DCA Wildcat football team's championship season being a point of pride and celebration for students and members of the community. 
community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, Section 1, the Metropolitan Council, hereby goes on record as recognizing the Donaldson Christian Academy Wildcat football team as the 2021 Division 2A state football champions. Section 2, the Metropolitan Council office is, dedicated, is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented to the head of school, Dr. Keith Singer. Section 3, this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Paul Wade. Thank you to the Metro Council and to uh, Councilman Roten for having us out. Uh, Dr. Singer sends his regards. He was uh, has a, a leg injury and is worried about uh, uh, occupying uh, crutches throughout the courthouse. Uh, I would like to introduce before we leave uh, some of the seniors I have with me. Uh, Dayton Sneed uh, played wide receiver defensive back. Uh, Nathan Magali, team captain, uh, played receiver and defensive back. Bradford Gaines uh, played quarterback. And Aiden Francis uh, played center and defensive lineman and was also a team captain. Uh, these guys uh, were, were leaders not only in our football program, but also in our football program. Thank you. This resolution. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Sepulveda. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to my fellow colleagues who participated today in uh, the challenge to actually ride WeGo buses to the council meeting today. I saw a lot of your tweets, and I really appreciate that. Um, this idea came about because um, we wanted to raise awareness around our current services and the need for more uh, to throughout the county in general. And so we wanted to do this before, uh, as well as we head into the budget cycle. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone who participated. I know it was hot, um, but it seemed like everyone had a pretty easy go at it. I also wanted to announce that I have office hours on the 28th at 10 a.m. at La Delicia Mexican Restaurant. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Stiles. Thank you very much, Pro Tem. Just wanted to announce that next Wednesday, the 25th, we will be moving into meeting number two for the master planning of the Global Mall, and we're going to have Steve Bland of we go as our guest to talk about transportation on the site so if you're interested please come to the southeast community center at 6 p.m again next wednesday may 25th we want to hear from everyone this is it's in the southeast but infects the entire city affects not infects <laughs> <laughs> thank you council member council member gamble Thank you, ProTM. I'd like to announce that there will be a community meeting uh, held on May 24th at 6 p.m. at the Minerva Foundation at 4022 Weiss Creek Pike to discuss a proposed development in that area. And we invite uh, residents to come and discuss the project and provide input. Again, that is May 24th, 6 p.m. at the Minerva Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Benedict. Thank you, Pro Tem. So just to note that tomorrow night at 6 p.m. there is a Zoom meeting that was originally scheduled in person in Madison for a rezoning of a property at 846 East Mead Avenue. The owner of that development is looking to build eight townhomes, so he's looking for a rezone from commercial to residential. And that meeting, again, is being moved from in person at City Road Chapel to Zoom. 
Uh, that Zoom link has been sent out. That Zoom link is also on the Metro Council calendar and on my Facebook page and um, also uh, distributed through Nextdoor. So I um, hope to see folks who are interested in that. Again, 846 East Mead Avenue, rezoning tomorrow night, 6 p.m. via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. The District 2 community-wide monthly meeting will be held next Tuesday, the 24th at 6 p.m. at the North Precinct in the community room. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Just want to make sure that all uh, members of the Budget and Finance Committee remember that we are beginning our department, our budget department hearings uh, tomorrow. That schedule is on the Metro website. Um, all the Metro uh, calendar as well as on the Metro Council resources page under under budget and finance. So we'll begin tomorrow with um, hospital emergency communications, fire and EMS and sheriff's office and health. And we will work through a lot of other important part departments in the next week or so. And that will help inform how we uh, make adjustments to the proposed budget. So I hope people will be there. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Van Rees. Hello, thank you very much. Um, I apologize uh, to the chair. I will uh, not be at the meetings next week. Uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to make sure that folks know that I'm going to be out of the country starting tomorrow uh, through June the 1st. I know, <laughs> it's a m much, much uh, um, anticipated uh, trip to France. So I have I have my excuses in, uh, but I'll be back on June the 1st and uh, between then and June the 7th, I'll be watching all of those videos and I anticipate uh, everyone says the best cure for jet lag, I understand, is to watch <laughs> watch those videos. And so I'm gonna be catching up. I'm looking forward to the public hearing on the 7th. Uh, as I'm gone, uh, constituents, please note that if you email, um, you will get an automatic reply. Um, and uh, Vice Mayor uh, Schulman is at your disposal. If something's coming up uh, that needs to be assigned to a at-large member, he'll do that. For the most part, uh, you should be able to get your services on the hub, uh, and I'll get back to you um, after I return on June the 1st. And one of the first things that we're gonna do when we get back is uh, that Saturday, June the 4th, um, we will be having a um, celebratory uh, ribbon cutting of phase one of Madison Station Boulevard. Phase one is the area between Gallatin Pike, the roundabout, and up to Amquis Station at Madison Street. Uh, we are gonna celebrate phase one at 6 p.m. on Saturday, June the 4th. Uh, we're inviting the community to come out Uh, the Tennessee Wine Festival will be happening. So uh, grab your ticket, go to that, and then join us uh, for that uh, very brief ribbon cutting at 6 p.m. on Saturday, June the 4th. Uh, we will, at the end of the summer, early September, waiting on a final date, do a, an actual brand new opening of the entire road. So uh, be alert uh, that there will be an even grander celebration at a later date, but please join us if you're part of the community on Saturday, June the 4th. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to get away and we'll catch up as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Any other announcements? Okay. Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 64th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 10th council meeting of to various city boards and commissions. That includes one appointment to the Metro Beer Board, two reappointments and one new appointment to the Metro Planning Commission, and nine appointments to the city's uh, Board of Equalization. 
The, among major legislation tonight, the council will consider our first two reading bills. They are important because they can include the $2.96 billion operating budget proposed by Mayor John Cooper and the tax levy that sets the property tax rates for both the urban services and general services district in Davidson County for the next fiscal year, which begins July 1st. The tax rates are proposed by the mayor are the same as last year. The new budget also takes effect on July 1st. The bill will pass routinely tonight, both of them. Then the council will be studying the budget and the budget and finance committee during multiple sessions over the next few weeks. And a public hearing on both the operating budget and the capital improvements budget will be held at the next council meeting on Tuesday, June 7th. The council must approve a budget and tax rates by June 1st or the mayor's proposals go into law automatically. That has happened before, but that is not expected to happen this year. Among resolutions, the council will again consider RS 2022-1507. It approves an option agreement between the Metropolitan Government and the State of Tennessee to purchase the property located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. The city desires to use that as part of its park system. The Board of Parks has approved that idea. The parcel is a little over 3.1 acres. Metro would pay $20.3 million to the state for the land. A fiscal note from the council staff, the 20... 21 appraisal value of the land according to the Ancestral Properties website is just $14.4 million. That concerns the council along with the fact that the previous council rejected buying the land three years ago for $11 million when then at large member now Metro Mayor John Cooper was among those voting no. There are two late resolutions filed on this matter. One removes the park acquisition from the city's capital improvements budget. That would kill the property acquisition, but it takes a two-thirds or 27 votes to pass that resolution tonight. Second late resolution would require an inspection of the condition of the cost of rehabilitation, the structure on the property. That structure was the former 19 strategies to conduct a scientific field mapping study of a total of 100 square miles within Nashville. CAPA will conduct the study and issue a final report on the impact of temperatures within neighborhoods, identifying those areas that suffer from more intense heat due to the built environment. The, build, the total cost of the project will be about $12,000, which NOAA is contributing that full amount. Metro would be liable for the cost of any replacement or repair of any lost, stolen, or damaged rental equipment during the project. In the area of the city's American Rescue Funds, RS-2022-15, 20 would approve a plan to send to the federal government on exactly how $9.3 million in rescue funds will be allocated, including over $6.7 million for the development of affordable housing and rental properties, including grants and or loans to entities to pay for the costs associated with the development of affordable rental, affordable rental housing. Under RS-2022-1523, before the council tonight, the council, Metro would receive a grant of almost $975,000 from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to establish and enforce federal and state child-mandated support, child support program guidelines for children who are born out of wedlock. The city will have to provide a cash match for that program of just over $502,000. RS-2022-1525 will accept a $4.9 million grant from the Tennessee Department of Corrections. It will go to the local trial courts. The grant will be used for housing expenses and treatment of nonviolent felony offenders with co-occurring addiction and mental health disorders. The project will last over the next five years. The council will also likely approve RS-2022-1533. It would accept the donation of ballistic vests for for the existing vest for canines valued at uh, $37,500. That's, a, that's the uh, name of the company making the, the uh, offer of the money. The grant will be used for housing expenses and treatment. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the donation is from the Canine Spikes Fund. These vests will be used to protect the police department from canines from assaults. Uh, finally, under RS-2022-1536, it would approve Metro applying for a $60,000 Another resolution would honor the heroism of Nashville International Airport volunteer Ernest Coble last month. And he did, he was, he's being cited for dealing with a dangerous situation involving an armed man threatening to harm himself and perhaps others. A fourth resolution would recognize the Liverpool International Song Contest, the road to Nashville 2022. Finally, a late resolution would honor the Nashville Symphony on its 75th anniversary. On second reading tonight, 
Under Bill R uh, BL 2022-1169, the council will consider for a second time a lease agreement by Metro Metro Charter School. This time is East End Prep. There have been several leases, leases like this before the council in recent months, with one being approved, one withdrawn, and one failing to receive the 21 votes for final approval. There is a split in the council. It remains over charter schools. Some councilmen feel it takes monies away from public schools, while others say charter schools are public schools that need to be properly funded. On third reading, the council is again poised to uh, approve BL 2022-1217 with Metro writing a 10-year contract to Oracle, a technology business which will soon have a major presence in Nashville. The contract would pay Oracle $15 million for hosting services for the e-business suite R12 and the PeopleSoft pension calculation system. Council approval is needed because this is a sole source contract, meaning Metro purchasing officials have determined that Oracle is the only source for this for these kind of services in this area. By the way, there is also a high-level delegation uh, from Uzbekistan here tonight. They are here visiting the city and also looking at exploring a sister city relationship with Nashville in the future. Uh, on third reading, the council will also consider tonight on final passage a bill RS 2022-1164 to further regulate outdoor construction sites. If you want to follow the council meeting as it progresses, you will find the agenda and staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website and on the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's now go to Vice Mayor Jim Showman. He'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting to order.
some ground work. So it makes it there's some like, like fun activities and whatnot. Because I remember last week when I'm playing, like, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. 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 So, but there is a trip to France, a uh, place of penalty. Uh, mostly, that's more a time base, but they want to go. Uh, but it's, it's coming together. So I'll see if they down that French trip. Well, this isn't. Yeah. Okay. As far as I, as far as I know from the past, it's spelled out. Okay. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and start. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is brought to us by Pastor Tommy Bailey of the Village Church, a guest of Council Member Tom Cash. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this evening for a fresh opportunity to serve you, one another, and our city. We pray your richest blessings on our brothers and sisters from Kurdistan, Iraq, and those who will be serving in Mendoza, Argentina. May your hand provide for their highest good. We give you thanks for the many gifts and graces represented in this room, and we ask for a deep well of mercy, justice, kindness, clarity, and wisdom. And we ask that you push back against the fear violence, confusion, and injustice that seem to hold sway in the darkest corners of our city, nation, and world. In their place, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, Lord, we ask for a peace that can only come from you. Almighty God, be our vision this evening, our hope, and the unshakable foundation that leads us to a more flourishing Nashville. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you all may be seated. Uh, we will spend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from May 5th, 2022? Got a motion properly seconded without objection. The minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Mr. Clerk, any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right. All right. So um, let me do this first. Let me go to Council Member uh, Syracuse. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. It's come to this body's attention that a certain former council member from District 25, former council member at large, and now our vice mayor has a birthday tomorrow. We just wanted to wish you happy birthday and thank you for your leadership with this body. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Syracuse. If I had known that's what the purpose was, I would have never called on you. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, uh, tonight we have uh, actually two uh, special uh, ceremonies. Um, um, we are going to ceremoniously swear in uh, several students who will be representing Nashville as they travel and explore our sister city in Mendoza, Argentina. And we also have some very special guests that we're going to recognize uh, from Erbil, which is located in the region uh, of Kurdistan. Um, so, um, but first we are going to... Um, and this is a first, as I understand it. We have students who, uh, again, are going to Mendoza. And what we would like to do is um, we are going to ask them to take an oath because they are going to Mendoza for a couple of weeks and they will be our traveling ambassadors. So if I could get the students and if the chaperones are here to come forward through the gate, without objection, we are going to uh, have you come forward and we're going we're gonna to have you take an oath of office. They actually called it an oath of travel. Just come up to the front and if you can spread around.
And um, um, the sister city's representative, Claire, who was taking pictures, I believe it's your birthday today. Is that right? Happy birthday. <clears throat> No, okay, good. All right, so, um, and let me get everybody's name first. All right, so um, the student ambassadors who will be traveling on behalf of the city of Nashville to Mendoza, um, if you'll just uh, raise your hand when I call your name, it's Ella Honeycutt from Hume Fogg High School, uh, Harrison Chapman from Brentwood Academy, uh, Simon Fox from University School of uh, Nashville, William Watson from Battleground Academy, uh, Anne uh, Petmany, uh, or Pet Many, I think I said that right, from Cane Ridge High School, and Alexander Reddy from Montgomery Bell Academy. All right, and our chaperones, the chaperones who will be going on the trip will be uh, Robert Kreibel uh, with Hillwood High School and Jayla Freeman at Cane Ridge High School. All right, so um, again, um, first time we've ever done this, so we'll try to do this right. Uh, if I can get you to... Um, Raise your right hand. Ready to go? <clears throat> and just repeat after me. I, state your name. As long as you didn't say state your name, that's good. <laughs> Do solemnly swear to uphold the reputation and values of the city of Nashville and to serve, as and to serve as an ambassador of my city while abroad. I recognize that I travel as a representative of the city of Nashville and not <laughs> as an independent citizen. <laughs> I will represent my city with honor in my words, deeds and actions. And I will obey and respect the laws and culture of the sister city I am traveling to. I enter into this promise of my own free will and understand the obligations of the cultural and educational exchange upon which I am. I'll repeat that again. Exchange upon which I am a part of and representing. Congratulations. Right. Uh, you can go forth. Congratulations and have a wonderful time. And we would like for some of you to come back. Well, all of you to come back, but some of you to come back to the council and explain how your trip went. All right. Now um, we are. Um, uh, very, very pleased uh, to welcome a major delegation of elected officials and representatives uh, from Erbil, uh, which is located in Kurdistan. They have come awfully uh, a long, long way uh, to come visit our city. Um, we are um, proud that they chose to come to Nashville. Uh, they are here exploring with our sister cities program a possible uh, future pairing through that program. Uh, the fact that they sent such a major delegation says a great deal about their interest. Uh, they are connecting on this trip. They are learning on the trip. And I hope they are enjoying their stay in our city. Uh, and maybe one day soon we can send a, send a delegation to their historic city as well. Um, so, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Metropolitan Council, citizens of Nashville, uh, if you would please join me in welcoming our distinguished guest. I am going to invite um, Governor Omed to the, to the um, uh, podium in the back, but it's Governor Omed and the delegation from Orbeel, 
please join me in welcoming them to Nashville. برایس روشن زمان، برایس اندامانی زمان، اوارت هم باشو، آورو زور زور خوشحالین لطفارتی وی سردانه کمان لخدمتی وی خوشویز دن. Dear President of the Council and members of the Council, good evening. It's our pleasure to be at your service this evening. اما تند روزی که شاندگ لهرمی کردستان لهولیری پایتختی هرمی کردستان و لیرین جمعه کوبنوی زور باشو زور سرکوتمان انجام ده لگال دوستا زور خوش است کنمان. We are a delegation from Erbil from the Kurdistan region. For the last few days, we have done some great, some very good meetings with our friends and with our counterparts. حقی خوانا اما لهریمی کردستان لهولیری پایت خود و ایوش ل ناشفل ل خوان بپرسین ل پیناوت سه اما وقت هولیر ناشفل من حلب جارد و که ببیند دست خوشک. It's the right question for us and for you to ask why did we choose Nashville to try to start the sister city project initiative with you. دو هکاری زور سرچیه اما آمریکا و ناشفل حکومت و جلکی من خوش دبتن لبروی یک چیان سرباز آزادکانی ایوا ولاتی ایمان لدست دیکتاتوری چی زور ظالم رزگار کرد. There are two main reasons that we love the country of the United States and the city of Nashville. One of them to be your great soldiers, your brave soldiers. Saved us, saved our nation from a brutal dictator. Bokari Duam Awea, Bashe Chizor, La Rwandi Kurdistan, La Vilayet Gurtwakani America, La Nashfilen, Ka Awan Batawati has the Hawan Malyati de Kanu Lera, has the Gurbad Nakan Awaj. دلالتی جوری دلی ایوا و کوچکی اوشاره و حکومتی اوشاره. The second reason, the biggest delegation from Kurdish, the biggest diaspora, is located in the city of Nashville. These people here, they do not feel they are strangers. They have been welcomed by you. They have been welcomed by your big hearts. سرباز آزادکانی ایوا کاتیگ ولات کی امن لرجیم کی صدام حسین آزاد کرد. لا شاركاني دي كي عراق روبروي مرقو قلدة بنوا لهريمي كردستان وبتايبد لهوليري بايتخد كان واندي وطقي برياري هريمي كردستان بولا لان خلقوا قلباران دكران When your brave soldiers came to free Iraq in the other provinces they were faced by bullets in our city which is the center of decision making in Kurdistan region they were received by flowers او گل باران کردند دلالتی او بو اما جلگ بون آزادی من دویست دموکراسی من دویست مافی مرو من دویست مافی جنان من دویست به هکانی مرو وعاتی للاي اما سرتاوی باور رو مبدع من بو. The reasons we received your your brave soldiers with flowers because we are a nation we want freedom we want peace we want human values we want respect for women's rights we wanted all these great values. بویا او رو به در فد زنم لیره لرگای ایوان نیونرانی خلچی ناشفلو و او حکومتی کلیره هیا سپاس و ریز و ستایشی پاریزگای هولیر و حکومتی هرمی کردستان پیشکش با حکومت و گلی امریکا بکین و با تایبت با خلچی ناشفل بکین که زور با مهربانانه خلچی ایمان لکاتی لقومانده لعمیز گرتیم Please allow me to deliver the thank of the Kurdish government of the city of Erbil, of my delegation, through you to the people and citizen of Nashville for the way you received our people here with your big heart and open arms. Emel Rojanik da Khalkman, 
ل ولاتانی دیکه دچار سوا. بله من استاد با خوشحالی و لنا ولاتی چی کسده که تندو تیجیت دهه. بله من باوری اما نگورا لپنا و اوی دچی تندو تیجی و کاری تروریستی بوستی نوا است ولاتی کی اما شرکی اما پناجی که که هر چی خوشکبرانی اما لکریستیان و لاین زیاوز کان لنا و تکانی دیکه عراق و لنا و تکانی دیکه در وی هرمی کردستان ل ولاتانی زیران که کاتیگلیان دقومه ل حوالی پایت خود و لرمی کردستان اما وقوع ایوا است آوان لباس دگرین. For hundreds of years, our area was a place for for violence. There were terrorism all around us, but we finally succeeded in becoming a harbor place for all these people around us who are fleeing violence from Christians, from the people from other provinces. They are coming, and we are receiving them in our city with big hearts. لا هرمی چی شش میلیونی دو میلیون آورمان لباس گردو لنهایشی ده هولی ری پایت خود زورترین جمره آورکانی دخو گردو که تا امر دکم ما میاد تا آوانی ل سوریه تا آوانی ل ترکیه تا آوانی ل ایران تا آوانی ل شارکانی دیکه عراقی بتهیبت این دیاواز کانی کریستیانو و اوکسانی که دش روبروی تند و تیجی رگزیده بنو استال هولر و کوپنگیچی آرام امل خدمتی اندای. The population of our region is about six millions. We have helped to receive about two million IDPs and refugees from troubled places in Syria, Turkey, and Iran. And people from other religions, like Christians and other minority religions in the area, they are finding our city as a good and safe harbor. ام است لیرین به آمانتشی زور جور لیرین که یکی من شارین لروشلاتی نوراست به شنازیوا دوای دست خوشگبونی هولیرو ناشفل دکین و هیوادارین ایوش و کنونران پشجیری ل هنگاو کانی آو هنگاوی اما بکن و پشجیری ل آراستی بیکرد نوی آو برد بکن که آوان و کد دوستک است هاوکارو همه هنگن لگل اما. We are here today as the first city from the Middle East. to come and try to form a partnership, a sister city, with the city of Nashville. I ask you, as a representative of the city, to try to help us, help in this request, to ask the members of the sister city to consider us to be your sister city. اما لون آوت هایی که دموکراسی در رفض دکات و آزادی را در برین رجای لدجیری او به هاکانی دموکراسی پیشل دکره، اما لون آوت هایی ممارسی دموکراسی دکه این پشتیوانی ایوا قلایی دموکراسی لون آوت هایی اما فراوان ترو جبرتر دکا. We are coming from an area that democracy and human rights are rejected in the large area. Our city is a place that there is a depth. And respecting democracy and human rights, and your support will give us more power to deepen this this principle. Ulat e chizor dola man man he, balam nizamu system e chizor khrab man habul rabardu ka hamur regiri kani bubune hokari awi piashkotun la ulati e manabu. Balam kate ke zakani ewa Amerika wasarbaza azakan tan ulata ki e man azat kert. او کات پیش کوت نکانی لامعای ده سالی را بردو که بون لعوادان کردن ول پیش کوت نکان دل ولاتی اما بر تقای صد سالی را بردو اما توانیم توانیم ان پیش کوت لولاتی خوان به نیندیو آوا کاری زیاد بکنیم که وقتا سرباز کانی اوا بیر کردن وی اوا هنگاوی اوا ل آزاد کردن ولاتی اما رجای چیزور درس بو لپناو پاراس نیم رو وایتی. We have a very rich country in all the resources. But because of the bad systems that we are ruling in this country, we could not develop. After your brave soldiers and your government saved us from the dictatorship before, in the last 10 years, we have developed what a normal country would develop in 100 years. We got benefit from the system that you have. We got a good advancement from learning from the experience that you have. Democracy at the زور میجویش قولینیا است حکومت کمان لکابینی نوی حکومت دا اصلاح و تاکسازی و هنگاونان با آرستی حکمیش رشید لپناو خالچه کار زحمتی زوری لرا بردودا دیتیا دست من پیکر دو ول هنگاوی زور گرینگو خیراداین بو تارا سرکردنی او با بتانی که لرا بردودا گرفت با بولا پیمان. We do not have a good history with 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 democracy. But in our new cabinet, we are trying to implement all the principles of democracy 
to really advance our system and advance our country. ئێمە دۆستەکانی ئێوەی لە ڕۆژهەڵاتی ناوەڕاست هیوادارین ئێوەش کە دۆستی ئێمەن بەردەوام بن لە پشتگیریکردن لە مرۆڤایەتی بەردەوام بن لە پشتگیریکردن لە بەهاجوانەکانی کە مەبدە و باوەڕی یەک بێژی ئێوەیە کە لەو هۆڵە دانیشتوون وی ئار یور فرێندس ئین دە میدڵ ئیست ئەن هۆپفولی یو کۆنسیدەر ئەس ئە فرێند ئەن وی وی ئار ترایین تو ئیمپلیمێنت دە ڤاڵیوس ئۆف هیومەن ڕایتس ئەن دیموکراسی ئەن وی وانت یور هەڵپ ئین ئیمپلیمێنتینگ دیز ڤاڵیوس ئین ئەوەر ڕیجن ئێمە لە کۆتاییدا دووبارە سپاس و تەقدیری خۆمان پێشکەشی هەموو ئەو کەسانە دەکەین کە هاوکارمان بوونە وەکو باسم کرد ئامانجی گەورەمان هەیە وڵاتی خۆمان خۆش دەوێت دەمانەوی پێشکەوتنی گەورە بەخۆ ببینین مرۆڤایەتی و بەهاکانی مرۆڤایەتی لەلامان لە هەموو شتێک گرنگترە پێکەوە ژیان بەشێکی گرنگە لە شارەکە و لە وڵاتەکەی ئێمە کە هەموو ئاینە جیاوازەکان و هەموو نەتەوە جیاوازەکان لەناو شاری ئێمەدا وەکو یەک بە ئازادی و بەیەکسانی دەژین پشتیوانی کردنی ئێوە بەشێکی گرنگ دەبیت لە سەرخستنی Again, I would like to thank all of you, all the members who are who have helped us so far, and I would like to to reemphasize that we we respect democracy, we respect human human rights, and we want your help to to advance this, to advance our country, to advance our region and our province. لە ماوەی سە ساڵی ڕابردوودا چەندین مەرگەسات بە سەرگەلی ئێمە داتێ من تەنها زۆر بە کورتی کاتتان ناگرم دوایین ئەو مەرگەساتاتان لە بۆباس دەکەم زۆر بە کورتی کە کاتێک لە ساڵی دوو هەزار و چاردا تیرۆرستانی داعش لە ناوچەکەی ئێمەدا سەرکەوتوو بوون و چەندین جێگەیان داگیر کرد بەڵام گۆڕەپانی ئێمە وەکو هەرێمی کوردستان و هەولێر وەکو شارەکەی ئێمە ئەو گۆڕەپانە بوو بە پشتیوانی ئێوەی ئازیز و سەربازەکانی ئێوە و هێزەکانی هاوپەیمانان داعشمان تێکشکاند و ئێمە سەرکەوتوو بووین I'm not going to bore you anymore, uh, but I'll just tell you one story. In the last hundred, hundred years, we have suffered many, many difficulties and many tragedies. The last one was in 2014 when Daesh terrorists, when ISIS terrorists came to our borders. With the help of your brave, brave soldiers and your government, we tried to make our border the graveyard for these terrorists. We did not let them advance to our parts. کاتێک تیرۆرستەکانی داعش و تاریک پەرستان ڕوویان لە ناوچەکەی ئێمە کرد بەشێکی زۆر لە خاکی سوریایان داگیر کرد بەشێکی زۆر لە خاکی عێراقیان داگیر کرد کە ڕووە و هەرێمەکەی ئێمە هاتن ئێمە بە تەنیا بووین پێشمەرگە ئەو ناوەی کە ئێستا ئێوەش ئاشنایاتیتان پێی هەیە بە تەنیا بڕیاری ئەوەی دا کە هێزەکانی ئێمە بوون پێشمەرگە مەرگمان هەڵبژارد تەنها ڕێگانە دەین ئەو تیرۆرستانە دەستیان بە شار وڵاتی ئێمە بگاتن When ISIS came, they occupied parts of Syria, parts of Iraq, but we here, with the help of our brave Peshmerga, that probably you already know the name, we decided we chose to die in our borders and not let them advance to our city. بەڵام کاتێک ئەمریکا و هاوپەیمانان بڕیاریان دا پشتیوانیمان لێ بکەن لە ئاسمانەوە ئێمە ئەو کات لە بڕیاری مەرگ هەڵبژاردن بڕیاری سەرکەوتنمان دا و لە نەتیجەشدا سەرکەوتین و ئەوان تێکشکان. But when the United States decided to help us, We change our resolution from not dying, from standing and being successful, and we succeeded in stopping them. او سوند خواردنه لب و کمال چی دیکه سوند بخوره و بین لهولیر لهولیری پایتختی کردستان و شاری به یک وجیان ایمال خدمتی هم بینو آوانون رایتی ایو بکن. At the end, I'm hoping that in a very short time soon, another delegation from your city come to represent your city in Erbil, and they have the same ceremony, swearing in to come to Erbil to represent your city. to Erbil, which is the city of coexistence and peaceful coexistence of people there. برای سروچی انجمن برای زندمانی انجمن دوباره سپاس لب او در فتح سپاس لب او میوانداریا خواهی گفته مرویاتی به پارزیت نو همیشه ایوش ساقو سلامت بنو زور زور سپاس. President of the Council, members of the Council, thank you very much for everything. May God protect humanity. Thank you very much for everything.
Thank you, Governor. Uh, the mayor of Erbil is here as well, along with a, um, uh, a number of very important uh, individuals that came with the delegation. They've come a long way. Um, we are so appreciative of the fact that you uh, have come to Nashville. We hope you continue to enjoy your stay, and we hope you have safe travels um, when you head back. And um, um, I believe that we have established a, a, a deep and lasting friendship. We are um, very glad that you are here, and um, we will work on sending a delegation to come to your city. Thank you very much. All right, before we get into uh, the rest of our calendar elections and confirmations, I know that we just recently had elections, but we still have elections going on. I know there's elections in other parts of the country tonight. Do we have any individuals here that I may have missed that are seeking public office? All right. Um, uh, the one other thing I'll say is, uh, and I know we have a late file resolution coming up, <clears throat> our hearts do go out. <clears throat> Seems like we have to do this every meeting. Um, to the city of Buffalo, uh, to Laguna Hills in California, and to Milwaukee um, for um, um, the pain and suffering that um, their cities have uh, endured in the last um, um, week or so. So anyway, our hearts go out to them. All right, we are now ready to proceed with the calendar. Elections and confirmations. Council Member Pulley, have you got this one? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules, uh, confirmations, public elections considered the following candidates. Uh, there was no action taken on Ms. Lori Kaste and Ms. Sherilyn Pettis, uh, candidates for the Board of Equalization, as they were not present during the meeting, so I believe those are deferred by rule. Okay. The uh, committee then considered the following candidates for appointment. Beer Permit Board appointment of Ms. Carolyn Perry, to expire October the 31st, 2023. The Metro Board of Equalization reappointments of Dr. Truett Ellis, Ms. Sharon Emerson, Mr. Roger Farmer, Mr. Charles Hankla, Ms. Melba Jackson, Mr. Trey Lewis, and Mr. Carnell Scruggs as alternate members of the board for terms expiring June the 6th, 2024. The Planning Commission reappointments of Mr. Greg Adkins and Ms. Jessica Farr for terms expiring March 31st, 2025, and the appointment of my former council member, Mr. Stuart Clifton, for a term expiring March 31st, 2025. Uh, and the committee recommended the approval of all these candidates, seven in favor, zero against. And I move the confirmation of all the aforementioned candidates. All right, thank you, Council Member Pulley. Um, so I've got a motion to approve um, all of those individuals that he just named. Council Member Pulley, before I, I get a second, there was a, um, several other forms were late filed, I believe. Uh, did you all take that matter up? Several of the questionnaires were several, late several filed. Several of the did questionnaires were late uh, filed. No, we did not take that up. I was unaware of that. All right, so um, let me make sure I've got this right. It looks like the um, Mr. Roger Farmer's um, questionnaire was late filed along with Ms. Jessica Farr. Uh, her questionnaire was late filed. Um, I think what I would need... Um, I will move to suspend the rules for right. those who are late filed. All right, so um, Council Member Pulley has moved to suspend the rules to get those two nominations in uh, due to the fact that um, uh, their questionnaires were late filed. Is there any objection to suspending the rules uh, to get those two nominees before us tonight? Seeing no, no objections, uh, the rules are suspended. So now we are on Council Member Pulley's uh, motion to approve all of those individuals that were mentioned properly seconded any discussion on um on the um the uh, motion to approve the appointments and the reappointments how long was the discussion on uh, stuart clifton <laughs> that was uh, rather lengthy uh, mr vice mayor it okay. took a lot of convincing the committee to approve his all right appointment. thank you that's uh, that's i figured it took so long all right so we have a motion and a second to approve all the appointments and reappointments on these different uh, boards uh seeing nobody in the queue all those in favor say aye opposed no 
You adopt. Let me go over the individuals that we just appointed uh, for the beer per permit board. Miss Carolyn uh, Perry, if you would stand up if you're still here. There you are, way in the back. Uh, Dr. Truett Ellis for the Metro Metropolitan Board of Equalization. All right. Uh, Sharon Emerson, also for the Board of Equalization. There's Miss Emerson. Uh, Mr. Roger Farmer, Board of Equalization. Okay. Uh, Mr. Charles Hankla. There's Mr. Hankla. Uh, Miss Melba Jackson. There's Miss Jackson. Uh, Mr. Trey Lewis. Okay. He may have had to go on. Uh, Mr. Carnell Scruggs for the Metro Metropolitan Board of Equalization. Uh, Mr. Greg Atkins for the Planning Commission. There's Mr. Atkins, a former council member. Uh, Ms. Jessica Farr. There's Ms. Farr for the Planning uh, Commission. And Mr. Stuart Clifton, a former <laughs> council member for the Planning Commission. Thank you all for being willing to serve on these respective boards. We very much appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, everyone except Mr. Clifton can leave if you need to. Mr. Clifton, you're going to need to stay. Okay. Oh, he's the first one out the door. All right. Uh, we're now ready for, um, uh, let's see, the, the other two, um, Mr. Councilmember Pulley will be, um, the, the, the two that you did not take up will be on the agenda at the next meeting. All right. Uh, we're now ready for the public comment period. I believe we had five people initially sign up, but now we're down to, I believe, four uh, this is the time dedicated to allow members of the public who have registered in advance to speak on matters uh, related to Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County. Uh, the first person up tonight, and again, you will have two minutes in which to speak, is uh, Shirley Marks, uh, representing uh, uh, NOAA. She's from District 6, Council Member Brett Withers District. Uh, she's going to be talking about the need for affordable housing. Uh, Ms. Marks, you are rec recognized. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shirley Marks, and my address is 2303 Barclay Drive, and I am co-chair of NOAA's Affordable Housing Task Force, uh, and I am a member of Metropolitan Interdenominational Church, and we have several members of NOAA that are here uh, to support and I'd like to ask if they would stand up real quick, give a shout out. <laughs> and Noah has identified several needs for affordable housing. And I'm just now, I'm just going to mention one. And the first one is for our neighbors coming out of homelessness. Uh, they need case management to help them utilize community resources to become housing stable. Case management services can help find the right services and simply just be there uh, for people that are formerly homeless. Uh, according to Judith Tackett, a formal head of Metro Homeless Impact Division, uh, th you know, these support services are one of the greatest needs to deal with homelessness, and especially when you're dealing with issues of mental health and addiction. Uh, case, manage, case managers, uh, they help keep people housed as they you know, work to overcome the trauma, and there is trauma in homelessness, uh, and also stress. Our children in shelters are often bullied by other students and need special help. Uh, as of Mar uh, March, Metro School, oh, did I do that? Um, <laughs> has that, that, identified- Ms. Marks, that means your time is up. Oh, okay. Just. One line and then I'm gone. Um, you know, our action together, the council and along with NOAA, and what we value as a city, we want a community that values everyone regardless of their race, economic status, culture, or belief. It, it is my faith that this means we are closer to the kingdom of God. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Marks. I think that was two lines, but that's okay. All right. um, uh, our next uh, speaker is Grace Smith uh, with Agewell Middle Tennessee, talking about the growing needs for senior housing. Um, and uh, Ms. Smith is from uh, Council Member Robert Swope's district in District 4. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I am Grace Smith, a uh, lifelong Nashvillian, and pleased to be here today on behalf of AgeWell, but also on behalf of over 20 other nonprofits in our community that serve older adults. At AgeWell, we receive calls every day from older adults looking for help, and I'm here today because we are receiving an increasing number of calls from seniors who are desperate for affordable housing, and they are looking for lists of subsidized and affordable housing options. They are struggling to live on fixed incomes as inflation has driven up the cost of almost everything and as rents have risen dramatically. We know in Davidson County that 53% of renters who are 65 and older and 24% of older homeowners are cost burdened, spending more than 30% of their income on housing. And there are long waiting lists for housing options. In fact, we called 16 subsidized towers in the past week and every one of them has a waiting list ranging from several months to over two years. In fact, one caller that we spoke to recently ended the conversation by saying, this can't be all there is. So I'm here as a lifelong Nashvillian who cares deeply about our city and about the older adults that have helped build our city, asking you to prioritize creating more low income and affordable rental housing for seniors, and also more support for older homeowners who want to age in place and age in their homes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Uh, our next uh, speaker is Antoni um, Christiansen uh, Galina uh, with Noah and Turk. He's gonna speak on statistics and argument on um, new housing units. Hello, everyone. My name is Anton Christensen, and I'm with the NOAA Affordable Housing Task Force. I grew up in Hendersonville, but would commute to school every day in high school to the University School of Nashville. The commute was three hours in horrible traffic, and I was tired all of the time. Ten years later, my dream is to own a townhome near where I work, somewhere walkable. And today I rent with two roommates. We live by Belmont and I've become a pretty successful data analyst. I've, um, I've saved up a bunch of money, but I keep losing bidding wars to institutional buyers and cash-only offers. It sucks, but I'm in a decent enough position until Belmont decides to tear my place down. As a renter, there isn't much I can do about that. My friend Farah has it a bit harder. She's working two jobs as a waitress and a bartender and can't afford to live too close to where she works. In Davidson County, the median worker gross wage is $37,800, but the median rent for one bedroom is $20,000 a year. I've got friends who are teachers, policemen, firefighters who grew up here and are still living with their parents and we're all pushing 30. We need more houses and not just luxury condos. We're building 1,300 new affordable housing units every year and we need to be building 5,000. I want to live in a city where regular working people can afford enough space for their families and not have to sit in traffic for three hours a day. We get to choose what kind of city we, we're going to live in. And may you choose boldly and wisely. Thank you. And uh, Antone was uh, from Council Member Tom Cash's district. Uh, Ms. Borum uh, from District 17, uh, Jane Borum with NOAA. Uh, talking about uh, crisis intervention programs. Ms. Borum. Hello. I'm the Reverend Jane Borum, a NOAA member and on its Criminal Justice Task Force. I'm also a mother. My daughter, Diane, whom we adopted when she was eight and a half years, is now 55 years old. She's intellectually challenged, medically disabled, and emotionally disturbed. My worst fear is that in the midst of a crisis, she would be killed or tased by our local Metro Nashville Police Department. Because Diane doesn't communicate well or understand verbal directions, she would become easily threatened by a law enforcement officer's efforts at trying to resolve her out of control anger. 
In order to calm her, I must spend at least an hour talking her down. Having watched our police shoot, tase, and kill other mentally challenged adults, I doubt if they take that much time to let her emotions cool. Health, engagement, and liaison services, or HEALS, would bring a medic and a trained crisis counselor to ensure Diane is treated with respect and given words of comfort, not commands. HEALS would give Diane the appropriate medical attention she needs, not a bullet or physical use of force. I hope that you will bring emotional stability and calm to people who cannot handle flashing blue lights, guns, and use of force. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Bourne. Uh, just to uh, just to check, uh, Chandra Gibson. Did Miss Gibson um, get here? All right, she was the uh, last person, but um, um, we'll check on her for uh, the next meeting. All right, that concludes uh, our public comment period. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we are now ready to go to uh, resolutions uh, on public hearing. Uh, we have two of them up tonight. Um, here's how this works. Um, I will call the resolutions up one at a time uh, and then refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. Then I ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution and then a show of hands for those who are here in opposition to the resolution. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, ask them to come forward to the back podium, find the microphone, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. I will then ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak. After that process, I'll close the public hearing, refer back to the sponsor. Our first resolution up tonight is RS 2022-1517 by Council Member Parker. It's a resolution exempting 802 uh, Vive Place from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental property non-owner occupied permit uh, pursuant to the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, can I get committee reports, please? Uh-huh. Uh, government operations. Oh, uh, Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Government operations approved. Six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Don't see anybody coming up. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I just, it, I'll move for approval with a brief comment. All right. Um, got, a, got a motion and properly seconded back to you. Thank you. So this is um, the Vibe Place Complex, which is uh, located next to Grimey's on uh, East Trinity Lane. Some of y'all might be familiar with the area. Uh, this complex is largely already um, short-term rental units. Um, the zoning allows it by right. This is a distance waiver because I believe there's a church in the area is what these folks have applied for in order to get another short-term rental permit issued here. Um, and, um, you know, I, this is the first one of these I've had, but being as it was properly noticed, the signs have been up as long as they need to be, and there's no opposition here. I'm comfortable with moving forward with this one. So uh, with that, I'll just renew my motion to approve this. All right, so Council Member Parker has moved for approval of RS 2022-1517. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2022-1517 say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Parker. You're, you've got the next one, RS 2022-1518, a resolution exempting 845 Vibe Place from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental uh, property, non-owner-occupied non permit pursuant to the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Parker, you are recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Yeah, Council Member Benedict, you've got this one too. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Government Operations and Regulations Committee approved this six in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Council Member Parker. Open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, move for approval. Um, this is the same complex as before. Um, same kind of approach that I'll take with this one as well. So 
I right. my motion for approval. All right. So Council Member Parker has moved for approval of RS 2022-15-18, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right. Thank you, Council Member Parker. We are now ready for uh, consent resolutions and resolutions. Uh, I'm going to go through the... Um, I'm going to go through the resolutions. These are the things that are on consent. All right, so I'm going to go through, um, again, these are listed on the consent um, calendar for resolutions. Um, RS 2022-1507 is on the consent calendar. 1519 is on the consent calendar. 1520 is on the consent calendar. 1521 on consent. 1522 on consent. 1523 on consent. 1524 on consent. <clears throat> 1525 on consent. 1526 on consent. 1527 on consent. 1528 on consent. 1529 on consent, 1530 on consent, 1531 on consent, 1532 on consent, 1533 on consent, 1534 on consent, 1535 on consent, 1536 on consent, 1537 on consent, 1538 on consent, <clears throat> 1539 on consent, 1540 on consent, 1541 on consent, 1542 on consent, 1543 on consent. Everything's on consent. Does anything need to be bumped off? Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized. 1507, please. All right, 1507, number three, item number three is off of consent. Uh, Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I don't necessarily want it to come off consent, but I was requesting that 1543, everybody who votes in affirmative, be added to it. If I need to take it off to do that, I certainly will. I think you're okay. Just leave me alone. I'm happy to take it off. It's... Yeah, but he wants everybody to listen to the sponsors. You can just take it off. It's fine. All right. I don't want to skirt the rules. <laughs> Uh, we were having a brief discussion up here. It was about something completely different. Yeah, right. But um, I would, <laughs> um, uh, we're going to take 1543 off of consent as well. All right. Anything else need to be taken off of consent? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> here we go. Um, RS 2022-1519 by Alan Young and others. Resolution accepting a, more, a memorandum of understanding between Kappa Strategies LLC in conjunction with uh, NOAA and the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the mayor's office to participate in a technical assistance opportunity to receive urban heat island mapping for an area of 100 square miles within the city of Nashville. Um, again, that's RS 2022-1519, RS 2022-1520 by Parker and Allen, a resolution authorized the Metropolitan Mayor to submit the Nashville Davidson Home Investment Partnership American Rescue Plan Home ARP Action Plan as substantial amendment number one to the 2021-2022 annual update for program year four to the 2018-2023 consolidated plan for housing and community development. That's by Parker and Allen. Item number six, RS 2022-1521 by Council Member Allen. Resolution approving amendment one to a contract between the Metropolitan Government and Pictometry International Corp to provide digital orthophoto and oblique images, maintenance, and other related services for the Metropolitan Governor, RS 2022-1522, by Council Member Allen, a resolution accepting a grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse to the Metropolitan Government through General Sessions Court for the provision of the Tennessee Certified Recovery Court Program, RS 2022-1523, by Allen and Stiles, a resolution accepting grant from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government through the Juvenile, juvenile Court to establish and enforce federal and state mandated child support program guidelines for children children born out of wedlock, RS 2022-1524 by Allen and Welsh, resolution approving amendment one to a parental assistance court grant from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government through the Davidson County Juvenile Court to provide opportunities for and meet the needs of eligible low-income families who have a court-ordered child support obligation. 
Uh, item number 10 by Allen and Welsh, RS 2022 1525. Resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Corrections to the Metropolitan Government through the State Trial Court for the expenses of housing and treating nonviolent felony offenders with co occurring addiction and mental health disorders. RS 2022 1526, Allen, Welsh, and Stiles. Resolution approving a contract buying between the Metropolitan Government and Rider Integrated Logistics for the provision of refrigerated trucks and trailers for Metro Action Commission Summer Food Services Program. Number 12 by Councilmember Allen, RS 2022-1527, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law, compromise and settle the property damage claim of hex quality meat against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $28,554.28, amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund, RS 2022-1528. O'Connell and Allen, a resolution approving an amendment to a purchase and sale agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Piedmont Natural Gas Company for a parcel property and improvements located at 800 Second Avenue North. Item number 14, Allen, Evans, and Welsh, a resolution accepting a grant from the National Association of County and City Health Officials to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health to partner with agencies and implement activities that address the community's challenges related to drug overdose deaths. Uh, that's uh, RS-2022-1529. Item number 15, RS-2022-1530, Allen, Evans, Welsh, and others. Resolution approving Amendment 2 to a grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentration for fine particulate matter in Nashville, Tennessee. RS-2022-1531 by Allen, Evans, Welsh, and others. A resolution approving Amendment 3 to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health to add additional epidemiology and laboratory capacity, enhanced detection for COVID responses. Item number 17, RS 2022, 1532 by Allen and Evans. Resolution approving Amendment 7 to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health to improve the health of those residing in or visiting Davidson County through targeted strategies to prevent and control the use of tobacco products. RS 2022, 1533 by Allen Evans and others. A resolution accepting a donation of ballistic vests for police canines from Spike's Canine Fund for the Metropolitan National Police. Police Department to protect police canines from assault. RS 2022 1534 by Allen and Evans, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan National Police Department, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for Extra Duty Police Services. Uh, item number 20, RS 2022 1535, Allen, Evans, and Stiles. Resolution to approve the First Amendment to a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Foray Technologies to provide software services for the secure transfer of crime scene photos for the Police Department. RS 2022 1536 by Alan Young, Welsh, and others. A resolution approving an application for a bicycle and pedestrian safety grant for the Tennessee Highway Safety Office to the Metropolitan Government through NDOT to educate the public on pedestrian and bicycle safety awareness. RS 2022 1537 by O'Connell, Withers, and Young. Resolution authorizing Tennessee Printers Hotel owner LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 315 Union Street. RS 2022 1538 by Allen and Welsh. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle a personal injury claim of Amarantha Martin against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $16,000 that amount to be paid out of the self insured liability fund. RS 2022 1539, item number 24, Allen Young, Styles, and others. Resolution accepting the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for a trash recycling brush calendar reminders um, and searchable recycling database and applications for the Department of Water and Sewer Services. Uh, again, RS 2022-1539. Uh, item number 50, 25, RS 2022-1540, Allen, Young, and Evans, a resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Waste Management of Tennessee for the provision of solid, solid waste collection and collection of carts, RS 2022-1541, a resolution recognizing the heroism of Nashville International Airport volunteer Ernest Coble on April 17, 2022. That's by Council Member Bradford. Uh, RS 2022 1542 by Councilmember Murphy, a resolu resolution recognizing the 2022 Fair Housing Conference and expressing the Metropolitan Council's support of fair housing in Nashville and Davidson County. Those are the items on the consent calendar. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Did you have item 25 on consent? Item 25 was on consent. Can we pull that, please? Uh huh. Thanks. Certainly. Okay, item 25 is off of consent. Anything? Okay. Anything else needs to be called off consent? Okay. All right. Need some committee report. All right. I'll go to Council Member Parker first. Uh, you've got one on here. It's a uh, 1520. 
On resolution 1520, Affordable Housing Committee voted 6-4-0 against. All right, thank you. Council Member Allen, you've got a host of them. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Budget and Finance considered the following bill resolutions uh, and approved them six in favor, zero against. They are RS 2022 1519, 1520, 1521, 1522, 1523, 1524, 1525, 1526, 1527, 1528, 1529, 1530, 1531, 1532, 1533, 1534. 1535, 1536, skipping one, 1538, and 1539. Six in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member, uh, Council Member Welsh, uh, Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Human Services Committee um, discussed RS uh, 1526, and we voted six in favor, zero against for passage. Thank All right, you. thank you, Council Member. Council Member Withers, I think you've got one in planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning uh, met and considered RS 2022 1537, and we recommended approval seven in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right. Thank you. Council Mayor Evans, Public Health and Safety. Vice Mayor, we considered uh, RS 2022 1529, 1530, 1531, 1532, 1533, 1534, and 1535, and voted six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Evans. Uh, Council Member Pulley, uh, you've got a couple in rules. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules considered are as 2022, that's 1541, recommended approval seven uh, in favor, zero against, and recommended approval of uh, RS 2022, 1542, eight in favor, zero against. All right, and last committee, Council Member Young, Transportation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. After most of our committee members arrived via WeGo bus, we recommended approval of RS 2022 1519, 1536, 1537, and 1539. 10 in favor, zero against, and I'll move approval of the consent agenda. All right. Thank you, Council Member Young. Uh, Council Member Young has moved approval of the consent resolution uh, calendar properly. Second, to any discussion on the um, consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay, let's go back to the, th I believe we had three that we're not on. It goes back to item number three, uh, RS 2022 1507 by Council Member O'Connell, Allen, and Allen and Withers. A resolution approving an option agreement between the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County and the State of Tennessee, authorizing the purchase of the property located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. Council Member O'Connell, you are recognized. Uh, we're on RS 2022 1507. Thank you. Uh, uh, I am going to move to defer one meeting, please. All right. All the reports were in. So Council Member O'Connell has moved to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the deferral motion. Council Member Johnston. Gonna, uh, thank you. I was going to make a motion to table this resolution until after my two late filed resolutions that are related to this resolution was heard tonight, if that is possible. Oh. Point, point of order, Mr. President. Uh, Council Member O'Connell. If I'm understanding the, the motion to table uh, that Council Member Johnson is making, I think the proper action may be to suspend the rules to take this later in the agenda, which I'm personally comfortable with. So if we want to do that instead, I don't know if she's wanting to table it to def cause a defeat of it, but I, I'm no. just making sure. I just wanted to table it so that we could hear the two late filed resolutions first and then hear the, this resolution. Uh, so, uh, Councilmember O'Connell, if you want to, <clears throat> if if it's easier for you to move it to the, the hill of the that. resolutions. I'm happy to do that. that okay. So, um, without objection, we'll move this to the hill Perfect. of the calendar and you don't have to worry that about table anymore. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. All right. There we so, go. this one will move to the end of all resolutions, including the late file resolutions. Okay. And then we'll just come back to it. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're now on, um, let's see, this is RS 2022-1540, uh, item number 25, uh, by council members Allen, Young, and Evans, a resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County and Waste Management, Inc. for the provision of solid waste collection and collection of carts. Council member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval. 
All right, so they were, uh, the committee reports are already in. Council Member Allen has moved to approval, properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I apologize. I had intended to have this discussion uh, in transportation infrastructure, but I think this one's important. Uh, I, can we just get um, either the administration or, or maybe Metro Water to explain the nature of this contract, how this relates to our overall status with solid waste collection um, and kind of just help help prevent, pre present to the public a uh, an overview of where we are and how this how this improves things. Uh, Mr. Jameson, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. I would admit I was in colloquy with another council member for a part of that question, but if it's with respect to how this sort of fits into the overall uh, waste management uh, vendors relationship, of course we have uh, the, the primary vendor, um, Red River, coming out of a, a bankruptcy scenario, which significantly ties our hands on what other vendor relationships we can have. Coming out of that, we did receive some relief and the allowance to engage other vendors. Uh, waste management uh, in negotiations, they have offered a rate that is consistent with rates um, across the country. They would be providing uh, four routes a day in Nashville, a, a total of 20 routes um, per week, uh, serving about uh, a little over 14,000 customers uh, in Davidson County. Um, it is a five-year contract. Um, it is, uh, I, I, I know this was uh, submitted as a late file at the previous meeting uh, because the timing is crucial just to get the services to the customers and that remains no less so the case today. The uh, urge uh, the council to, to please, please consider adoption of this because uh, getting this vendor out onto the streets as soon as possible is uh, in our best interests. Councilor Mayor O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate that. I'm certainly in support of moving with urgency to uh, improve solid waste collection. I think what we've seen with Red River is obviously the, the failure of a private vendor under contract. Um, has this contract strengthened the terms uh, such that if the vendor fails to perform, we have other provisions uh, under five years. I just, you know, we don't want to make the same mistake twice. Yes, the Red River contract was originally initiated, I believe, back in 2007 and then uh, re-upped uh, in, I believe, 2017. Uh, certainly the bankruptcy uh, caused Metro Legal Department to go back and revisit the terms of that contract and also look at the uh, underlying strengths of vendors. Uh, waste management, I believe, is one of the largest uh, trash collection vendors in the country and has resources that uh, uh, other smaller companies could not provide and uh, gives us greater assurance of their capability. So to that end, if there were a failure, do we have a recourse? I have not checked with uh, Metro Legal. I do believe they had other vendors uh, in queue and with which they could engage uh, briefly, uh, but I don't have the, the names or details on those other vendors. It, it, I guess, Mr. Jamison, when those become available, can we get those submitted to the council, please? Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you. I appreciate Council Member O'Connell asking those questions. And also, just to be sure, does this in any way um, produce any obstacles to the, the eventual implementation of our zero waste master plan? Does this obligate us to a certain amount of garbage that has to be picked up or something that would be counter to trying to send waste to recycling or composting? No, it does not. Uh, in fact, in recent meetings with waste management, they are um, exploring uh, some uh, fairly fascinating approaches to zero waste approach for Davidson County. Um, and uh, they are in, in compliance with our zero waste plan and aware of our solid waste master plan from 2019. Council Member Allen, anything else? It's got it. All right, anybody else? Anybody else with questions? All right, we are on RS 2022-1540. Uh, Council Member Allen has moved passage. Um, it was properly seconded. Nobody else in the queue ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2022-1540 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. Thank you. Uh, we're on RS 2022-1543. It's a resolution recognizing the Liverpool International Song Contest. Road to Nashville 2022. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, I believe this one went to rules. Council Member Pulley, you've got this one. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, rules recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Syracuse. Move approval with a brief comment. All right, Councilmember Syracuse has moved approval, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you. Uh, extraordinary opportunity here to link two uh, massive music cities. Um, this started during 2020 when uh, Liverpool had a uh, songwriting contest around the world that uh, promoted kindness and unity during a time when we were all not connected. Uh, this year, uh, especially this month, poignantly uh, launching it, uh, the second go around being uh, 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 Mental Health Awareness Month, uh, this contest around the world, uh, it's already gotten uh, over 600 entries, um, is going to be about uh, battling the stigma of, me of mental health. Every contestant around the world who uh, submits the, their song um, will have an opportunity to have access to a life coach or psychologist no matter where they are in the world. Um, the uh, cool, really cool thing about a connection here is that it will end on October 9th, which is John Lennon's birthday, obviously another connection to Liverpool, and uh, the venue will be here in Nashville at Exit Inn. Uh, the winner will have an opportunity to play at the Cavern Club in, in Liverpool. Uh, so wonderful opportunity to uh, connect our cities, and I do ask uh, all those in favor of being uh, co-sponsors. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Syracuse. Okay, so we've got a... Um, a resolution, it's RS 2022 uh, Councilor Syracuse has moved for passage. Um, it's been properly seconded. Councilmember Syracuse also requested that everybody voting in the affirmative be listed as a sponsor. Um, any questions, any discussion on this resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2022 for passage, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. All right, we have got four late filed, and then we have to go back to item number three. So we'll um, go to the uh, late filed um, resolutions. The first one is a resolution recognizing the 75th anniversary of the Nashville Symphony. Uh, sponsors are Council Members O'Connell and Evans. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Need to suspend the rules. Or I guess, do we do committee reports first? Um, let's see. So I think this one would have gone to rules yes. anyway. So I need to know. Um, uh, you can give me the whole spiel we if go. you want, Councilmember Pulley. Sure. Uh, it did come before rules, and there was no objection to late file nature. And if you like the committee report now, rules recommended approval seven in favor, zero against. All right. So uh, Councilmember O'Connell will move to suspend the rules. Uh, is there any objection to suspension of the rules to get this resolution before us tonight? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember O'Connell, you're on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. These, uh, this, uh, I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right. Councilmember O'Connell has moved uh, passage of this late file resolution regarding the National Symphony, properly seconded. Back to you for... Um, uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, recognizing the remarkable occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Nashville Symphony. We've got them, uh, I believe, committed for a floor presentation on June 7th, where I'm expecting we might uh, get uh, the treat of having some of their musicians perform right here in the chamber. Uh, prior to that, that weekend of June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, um, they are doing a, a special presentation of Beethoven's Ninth, but they also have an original commission. So exciting to recognize their achievements and encourage colleagues to support and sign on if you'd like. Thank you. All right. I'm glad they'll be playing uh, while we're taking up the budget. Uh, Council <laughs> Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to know if I could be added to this resolution. Uh, Absolutely. All right. Council <laughs> Member Stiles is being added to it. I, I am happy to deploy the Murphy rule here. Uh, the Murphy rule meaning that uh, every, everybody just joins on. Is that it? <laughs> okay. All right. So so um, everybody who's list, who's voting in the affirmative be listed as a sponsor of this one. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolutions adopted. All right. Uh, next one up is... Um, in the packet is uh, a late file resolution, resolution amending resolution number RS 2021-1201, initial resolution determining to issue general obligation bond of the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to reallocate funding as further described in the resolution. Council Member Johnston, you are recognized. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, this one would have gone to rules first. 
Councilmember Pulley, uh, did this one come before you guys? It did. We did not provide a committee report. Uh, we were just ruling on the Rule 13 vote only, and there was no objection to uh, uh, the late file nature. All right. Uh, Councilmember Johnston. Um, we actually, there is no committee report because it went to budget, and we, um, I'm hoping to re-refer that for next meeting. Um, and so I need to suspend the rules, please. All right. So you want to suspend the rules to get this one in front of us tonight? Correct. All right. So Council Member Johnston has moved to suspend the rules to get this resolution before us tonight. Any objection uh, to suspension of the rules? Okay. Seeing no objection, rules are suspended. You're on your resolution. Thank you. Um, so I, I put a, or Rosie, or someone, put a packet on your desk. If you will pull out the last page uh, behind there, because um, that, that is what's referencing this. Um, we are considering a, an acquisition of a property at 88 Hermitage Avenue um, under the heading of parks for $20 million. It was asked last meeting uh, from Councilman Sledge, if we were to not purchase this property, what would happen to the $20 million? So the answer to that is that it goes sort of into a black hole until it's reallocated, really. Um, and so I wanted to give us that option. Um, what you're looking at on the front page, I asked the Parks Department, what sort of deferred maintenance needs do we have? So you are looking at a spreadsheet that totals $92,851,250 of deferred maintenance needs. If you'll notice, the last six categories, shelters, athletic parking lot lighting, fencing, irrigation, various hardscape and fountains have not even been assessed. So add that. Also add the extreme high uh, cost of materials, uh, inflation. And so I would assume that we are very easily into the seven figures of needs for our current uh, parks, greenways, uh, and such. So what I have proposed as an option, if we do not purchase this property, um, is to reallocate this $20 million to defer, deferred maintenance needs of our existing parks inventory. These are our neighborhood parks, our playgrounds, our tennis courts, our basketball courts, dog parks that are in need of repair and maintenance from a capital improvements perspective. Um, and so I wanted to put this in front of you so that you know that there is an option. Um, and then I will move to defer uh, until for one meeting, please. Seven oh. figures, nine figures, well over a hundred million dollars, however many figures it is. It's a lot of figures. All right, so uh, what uh, Councilmember Johnston is doing, she's asked for a, uh, a one meeting deferral on this resolution, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, yes. properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the deferral motion. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Uh, we're on a one meeting deferral motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this resolution is deferred one meeting. Councilmember Johnston, you've got the next resolution. Uh, also late filed a resolution requesting inspection of the condition and cost of rehabilitation of the structure located at the 88 Hermitage Avenue property be made prior to the acquisition, acquisition of this property by the Metropolitan Government. Councilmember Johnston, you are recognized. Media reports, please. <clears throat> Councilmember Pulley, late filed. I'm assuming you want to talk about the late file nature. Well, we had no objection to the late file nature, and we did consider this resolution and voted eight in favor and zero against the substantive resolution. All right. So I also think it went to budget, but let's get, let's uh, suspend the rules first. Uh, if you can, you want to move to suspend the rules. I would like to suspend the rules. Please. All right. So Councilmember Johnston has moved to suspend the rules to get this late file resolution before the body. Any objection to suspension of the rules on this one? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember Johnston, you're on your resolution. Committee reports, please. Uh, Councilmember Allen. Right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, recommended approval, six in favor, zero against. All right. Councilmember Johnston. Thank you. Back to the packet that was put on your, on your desk, if you would like to follow along. RS 2022-1507 has this body considering entering into an agreement with the state of Tennessee to purchase the property located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. This same acquisition was considered in 2019, and due to the inability of MNPS to give assurances they wouldn't demolish the property, that body declined to purchase the property. Saving this structure was clearly of utmost importance to the previous body, and I believe this one as well. 
The proposed purchase price is $20 million based on an appraisal that is, in my opinion, irrelevant to Metro's desired outcome for this property, which is to save the historic structure. I've printed off certain pages and highlighted appropriate lines of this appraisal that show that this particular appra appraisal is based on the assumption that the property will be redeveloped to an identified highest and best use, which is to raise the current structure and build high density, multi-story mixed use development. The sales comparison approach was used based on that assumption and properties such as Marathon Village were used as, comparable, as com comparables to assess the value. Because Metro seeks to repair and renovate this structure that is currently in disrepair as stated in the appraisal, the cost approach is a much more appropriate method of appraisal. The cost approach to appraisal is based on the estimated reproduction or replacement cost of improvements, less accrued depreciation, plus land value. This approach would result in a more appropriate value for Metro, uh, Metro based on Metro's plan for the property. This resolution requests this cost approach appraisal be performed. Additionally, it is irresponsible and lacking in common sense to enter into a purchase agreement without doing any due diligence to assess the damage to the property, its viability, or the cost associated with restoring the property to a usable state. No one in this room would do this with their own money. Why would we do it with taxpayer funds? While the memorandum we received Friday evening states that the property is in good condition, this statement is based on an opinion of an historian in 2019. The 2021 appraisal specifically states it's in poor condition and unusable in its existing state. Recent visits to the property show that it needs a new roof, including decking, a complete gut to the studs and floor joists. The electrical wiring has been stripped, HVAC needs completely repla replaced, and water intrusion has caused mold issues and could be indicative of structural issues to name a few. It's truly a sin and a shame that the state has allowed this historic structure to fall in such disrepair. All of that to say, we need to know what we're getting into from a financial perspective. So in addition to an appropriate valuation method, this resolution requires the necessary due diligence be performed to more accurately know the scope and cost of this massive restoration project. Again, this is just common sense and our responsibility as stewards of taxpayer dollars. I move approval. All right, so Council Member Johnston has moved approval of uh, the late file resolution properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Young, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm almost ready to pass the plate around. She took us to church a little bit about the state sinning. Um, I tell you what's common sense is if I am the state, I'm going to go buy an appraisal of what I know I can get when I go to market. Um, if I'm the state, I'm not really concerned about Metro's intent and what the value is to Metro because I'm concerned what the value is on the market and what I can get for it. I think it is a waste of time and money for us to proceed with paying uh, for another appraisal. Um, the longer we wait, the more uh, this property is going to cost. And I have a question for the administration as far as the timing. Um, where are we on a, a timeline to exercise our option? Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Young. Um, the state needs to close by the end of the fiscal year, by this June. Um, we do not have absolute assurances that uh, they would wait until uh, June, to be honest. We have just told them that in order to accommodate the inspection request, which we deemed fair and certainly didn't want to come across as resisting it because we don't want to incur any suspicion, that we would just have to kick this until June 7th. And we are asking the state to please consider that timely for them to close if approved by the council uh, before the end of June 30th. So would, uh, by going through and doing and paying for this useless appraisal, would that uh, still allow us to close in, in time? We are doing our best. Uh, uh, former Councilman uh, Bedney, who is seated to my left, uh, who also happens to be an architect and was among those who inspected the facility this past December and determined its condition, um, uh, is working with General Services Mike Leonard as rapidly as possible to get the um, structural engineer to assert uh, what we believe has been uh, previously reported regarding the uh, what they refer to as the bones of the structure being in good repair. Um, and there is undoubtedly uh, uh, some deterioration, some old office furniture, uh, a slight degree of water intrusion, 
but we have been advised by Robbie Jones, Mr. Bedney, uh, the Historic Division, Planning Department, that the, the fundamental structure of the building is in good condition. Uh, nevertheless, we do want to provide that structural engineer report um, through general services, and we are endeavoring to do that as quickly as possible. Thank you. And I, we want this property. We wanted it several years ago, and for some reason the council decided not to. And I, I think if we put it off anymore, that we're going to lose the opportunity to save this property. It's a very strategically located piece of property. And I think to vote for this resolution, this late filed resolution, will waste money on, a, on a, an appraisal that is worthless and useless. Um, so I would highly encourage my colleagues to vote against this late filed resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. All right, thank you. I've got um, um, Councilmember Nash is next. Uh, Councilmember Johnston, I'll come back to you, but Councilmember Nash is next. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Question for the administration. Uh, I think this is something like three acres of property. Besides the historic building that we're looking to restore, do we envision any other construction facilities on that, on that uh, property? So um, the, the site is situated between properties owned by the state and uh, properties owned by MDHA. Um, the MDHA site is not particularly large. Um, it might be capable of housing uh, an affordable or workforce uh, uh, development housing. But the thinking from the planning department is that it's probably a much more viable development if they can partner with Metro on Metro owned property. So our ability to partner with MDHA on additional properties surrounding Wharf Park to provide affordable workforce, uh, mixed un income housing, while preserving an historic structure is, is the overall objective. If not executed by June, we know, I guess, four things if the state sells it to a private developer. There's not going to be affordable housing on the site. There's not going to be development that is complementary to Wharf Park. There's not going to be ensured compliance with, with Wharf Park or historic preservation. And there's certainly not going to be any public input. There just won't be by virtue of the private developer's rights. So if we can acquire the property and obtain that opportunity uh, for housing, that's the, the, the long objective. I'm here um, with our um, with housing uh, division director at Metro Planning who's been working on this towards that objective. Um, there's a feasibility analysis coming from the planning department to sp specify what sort of housing opportunities, what specific housing opportunities there could be, uh, but we can't get there if we don't acquire the property. So I, if I heard you correctly, the short answer is yes, there's more planned for that property than just the possibility of restoring the old the school for the blind. So it, it, it's a larger investment than just in the school. That is correct. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilmember Nash. Councilmember Hauser. Uh, the question I have is, is there another buyer in the wings for this property? Or are we just assuming that if we don't take it, there is? The, the state is not inclined to share with us the information they have with respect to other bidders and buyers. I just have to uh, assume, based on what I've seen of downtown Nashville real estate, that it'll go fairly quickly um, and it'll be a seller's market. Councilmember Hauser, anything else? Councilmember Withers. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I know we have had several documents that have been sent to us. One that I would uh, point uh, folks to who uh, maybe weren't serving the last term, but just as, as a reminder uh, for those of us when this was considered the last time, there is a, uh, at that time, of course, it was being contemplated as uh, an acquisition potentially for a school site uh, there was some degree of dialogue with Mr. David Prophet from MNPS. There is a letter in a packet that Mr. Jamison has distributed um, that was dated May 13th of 2019, which is before we cast the final vote on it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if I may, I know he's uh, present in the room, but uh, this item came before the Planning Zoning uh, Committee last time. 
uh, our chair of the Planning Zoning Committee at that time was uh, Councilmember Fabian Bedney, who's present. Um, and, and I just want to read the last paragraph of that really quickly. It says, historic preservation is important to us and many Nashvilleans, many others in the Nashville community. The Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee of the Council respectfully requests an assurance that the design program of the architectural program will preserve the existing building on this property. If preservation is not feasible, efforts should be made to repurpose the building or portions of the building into the new building, which would have been a school building, as, as feasible. We ask you to please inform the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee of any plans to preserve or repurpose the existing building at our May 21st, 2019 committee meeting. Uh, that was signed by uh, Fabian Bedne, who was the chair of the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee at the time, as well as myself for District 6, Councilmember Syracuse, and uh, Councilmember Mina Johnson from District 23, who, of course, is still uh, gracefully serving on the Planning Commission. So I just wanted to place that kind of into context is that the discussion that we've heard in Nashville for quite a long time is that people are concerned about uh, historic preservation. We're losing our heritage in particular for this one. This has, uh, I mean, albeit a little bit painful, right? But this one has an important uh, historic context to Nashville and the state of Tennessee and as it uh, pertains to how uh, individuals with disabilities were treated, spe specifically African-American individuals who uh, needed those services. And so there was a concern, I think, that we had, if I can summarize it quickly, is that um, in the face of all this concern that we've had about historic preservation in Nashville, in particular, also wanting to preserve uh, history related to African-American community in Nashville and in the state of Tennessee, that Metro government would knowingly purchase a, a building with that history and then demolish it. Right. And so kind of what we asked for is, can you at least give us some additional information to exhaust all opportunities if we do buy it, to exhaust all opportunities to preserve the building or to reincorporate it somehow into a new building so that we can we can honor and, and still consider that the educational value of that, albeit painful portion of our history, um, that information was not presented to our committee or to the council at that time. And that is the reason why uh, certainly I voted you know, no on it is that I was unwilling uh, to, in the, in the face of that uh, public comment, um, I was unwilling to have Metro government buy a building specifically to demolish it, right? So uh, I, I think maybe in retrospect, I would say maybe we should have bought it and taken a different step, which is to say that we would not allow uh, the MNPS to proceed with plans until we had more of information. Now, like in, in retrospect, that might have been a better way to do that. But I just wanted to provide that history. It's, it's not that we thought that it was a bad deal last time. We thought it was bad precedent for Metro government to acquire a parcel with specific history for the treatment of African-American people in our state and then to uh, do so knowing that we were planning on demolishing it without exhausting all of their opportunities. So I just wanted to put that out there again. I mean, my hope is again, like if, if we do not acquire this property, for sure it's going to be demolished. For sure it's not gonna be affordable housing. Um, and while it's not essential necessarily that this building be incorporated into Wharf Park, um, what could potentially happen is you have a market rate development. Uh, we have a very difficult conversation about what happens with homeless neighbors who are living in what is today Wharf Park. That gets cleaned out um, in the sense of folks get moved out of that park. We, do, we put all these assets into Wharf Park, which then becomes a very, very nice uh, backyard for market rate housing with history being destroyed. So I just wanted to say that, that I, for those reasons, I remain in favor of acquiring this parcel. I know the numbers may not work, but just wanted to provide that history and reiterate my support for this acquisition. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so we first looked at buying this last term, 2019, I believe. And at that time, I was a very strong no vote because MMPS wanted it for the National School of Arts. Uh, their argument for buying this was not a very sturdy one. Uh, one of their main selling points was you can see it from the interstate. Uh, and, and that just kind of, that in addition to a lot of other statements and, and uh, I would go, I mean, we make a lot of non, nonsensical arguments on this floor that, that we think are logical at the time, and, and you're welcome to think that I'm doing that now, but there were not a lot of logical statements made to justify 
the purchase of this for MMPS at that time. Um, and in fact, I want to purchase this property. I think that Metro could do a great job with it. I think we could do some wonderful things there for the community. But I also feel very strongly that we have to be responsible. While property taxes are lower now than, than when I was first elected, that those of you in your second term were first elected, explaining this to our constituents when they have seen property values go up so high and we're running around town purchasing property where, um, and, and Mr. Jameson reminded me of my quote of last term, when we have for years balanced our budget on selling real estate, quite often at fire sale, quite often not getting accurate um, appraisals and assessments of the value of our assets. We just ship them off on, on eBids or eBay and, and lose significant a lot of money. Um, so here's where, where I'm, I would like us to have some conversation around. Um, the realistic responsibility we have I still would love to see on a regular basis some sort of reporting on what empty buildings we have, what buildings we're using, what buildings and departments are renting. I know that's coming, Councilman, I mean, sorry, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Jamison has sent us another update on that because I spoke on that a couple of meetings back about Councilman Hall's um, legislation and I will be very quick with this. I know I only have a few seconds left, but, but we need to sit down and look at that because clearly uh, when our administration has changed so rapidly since I was first elected in 2015 and, and we do have four year terms and eight year term limits, we need to have some sort of task force overlooking all of our property because it seems to be hot potato of who can sell what to balance what to get a new toy. And that is not responsible government whatsoever. Um, and so with this, I really hope that we can take some time and be responsible. If it hasn't sold yet, I, I would like to know why. Why hasn't the state sold it to someone else? I, I, I would love to think it's because they love us so much, but I think we, we at times know otherwise. And so I think it is appropriate to slow down, get this information, and make an appropriate decision here. Um, there's no way that I can support this without having a plan. And let's be realistic, y'all. These threats of, well, if we don't buy it, something awful a developer will do there. Last I checked, we, we control land use zoning here. This body. That is one of the biggest things we do in this body. If we are worried about what could happen there, let's, let's change the plan. Let's change the zoning. Let's look at that whole area. Thank you, Council Member uh, Murphy. Uh, Council Member Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I was wondering if it would be appropriate if we could hear from uh, former Council Member Bettany since this is his area of expertise um, and also since it was mentioned that he was a part of that appraisal process, uh, excuse me, the um, uh, ex inspection process um, in December. And it's also my understanding that this was also his area of expertise uh, prior to joining council. Um, well, Mr. Bedney is at the administration table and works for the administration. So uh, Mr. Bedney, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Uh, um, I am very passionate about historic preservation and I have a background in it. Many of you probably don't know what I did for a living. I was the designer of the Howard Office Building, for example. That's a building with a strong historic component. So I have visited and designed buildings uh, with a variety of, of issues, uh, many of them with uh, historic uh, issues on them. So. Now that I work at the mayor's office, part of my job is to pr provide that expertise to the mayor. And when we uh, were looking into uh, purchasing this building, the first thing I did was to visit the building and, and make sure that I felt comfortable recommending it. And I did. I think it's a building that that is it's good, going to be good for us and that it can be uh, the, the issues that uh, the building faced by being uh, broken into by uh, people uh, can be repaired. Uh, so I, I feel strongly that this is something that we can do and that we should do. 
mostly like Councilmember Wither said before, I'm also very passionate about historic preservation, and for me it was important that we don't do anything that will jeopardize uh, the you know losing a, a national potential landmark in in the city of Nashville. So. I'm sorry if that's not the question you asked me, but I'm, I'm very passionate about this and I appreciate the opportunity to share. Um, so my answer is I feel very strongly that this is a building that is uh, in good shape to, to work with. Uh, obviously, uh, it has some cosmetic issues, some uh, issues that need to be repaired, but the fundamentals are, are good, I, I personally feel so. Uh, and believe me, I've seen over 30 years my share of buildings. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you, former Councilman Bitney. I was hoping that uh, I would get a little banter between you and Councilman O'Connell like the good old days. But thank you for uh, for sharing that. And um, I, I stand in uh, uh, support, or I stand um, having a hard time with my words today. <laughs> um, I am in agreement with the sentiments of Councilmember Withers and Councilmember Young, and I, I do believe that this is a property that we need to save. So thank you, Councilman Bidney, for uh, giving us your, your expertise and sharing that. All right. Uh, Councilmember Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanted to stand in support of uh, preserving the building and buying the building. Um, I think that uh, actually somebody was asking during our budget conversation on Saturday, if we think that our city is uh, equitable with its budget and its funding and its money, um, and while some of us say we think we're in the right direction, uh, someone said there's still a lot of ways to go, especially when it comes to African-American history and our investment in the African-American com uh, community. Um, there's a lot of building downtown that used to belong to the African-American community or has African-American history that are no longer there uh, for whatever reason. Uh, Properties that we could have preserved, history that we could have held on to that is a, f a fabric of this society. So this particular building, not just for the disabled community, but also for the African-American community, and one of its kind, I'm reading the letter from the Historical Commission, and if you see all that is attached to it, this is one that I think, you know, we, we, when it comes to money, there's not a lot of it, yes. But oftentimes we have to agree where our money goes to. And I think that our priorities sometimes may get skewed. Uh, we spend a lot of time and a lot of arguments on some things, and some things we, we rush through. That's just, just the way it is. And so this is one that I think that I want us to give it a pause and think about what it means and what it represents. And I hope that all of us will, will support uh, the purchase of that building. Someone said if we don't buy it, what will happen? Well, we decided not to for whatever reason three years ago and see how much money we're paying now for it, uh, which we could have saved if we had made the decision three years ago for whatever reason. So if we don't stand, then we come back, then we'll pay more. That's just what it is. So if it is a building worth saving, and we all do agree it is, uh, I'm open to the caveat that we put something there that it should not be demolished. It should be uh, uh, retained or, 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 or repurposed. But I, I do say that we all should support the purchase. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bradford. I have a question for the administration on this. Um, so three years ago when the discussions seemed to be going downhill, MMPS couldn't guarantee the, the preservation of the structure and it looked like the bill was going to die. Was there any attempt by the administration or the powers that be to either substitute or come up with another plan in which Metro could have still bought the property and kept it as surplus property or as park property without it going to schools? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Bradford. I may lean on uh, former Councilman uh, Bedney uh, once more. My recollection was this. Um, it was a, a previous administration. Um, the, uh, after the failure of the second ordinance, uh, the sense I got was that they just sort of threw up their hands. Um, it was at that point that then Councilman Bedney directly wrote to the state himself and I think essentially begged and pleaded that they give us another chance um, and the state agreed. Uh, they then, I, I think this is spelled out in the, in the memo, they then uh, provided their following appraisal by July of 21 um, and uh, agreed to the uh, deal with us at least up and th through uh, June. 
Um, I, I, let me ask if I can put Councilman Bedney on the spot and see if he recalls any other uh, different uh, series of events during that time in 2019. Mr. Bedney. Thank you. Can I uh, banter with Councilmember O'Connell or that's not permit? I, I think we suffered through that enough All before. Right, right. What, I, what I can tell you is I reached out to the mayor at the time and I asked if uh, it would mind if, if I did that and, and there was no issue. And so I actually uh, reached out to the state and I was happy when the state got back with us, giving us more time. Uh, but then we went through a transition. And then we went through a time where uh, the, the finance were not there for us to do that. So there was a, a gap time that didn't allow us to, to move faster. But I, I, the intention, my intention was always there. And I believe Mayor Cooper was also interested in uh, purchasing the property and preserving it. Uh, uh, it's, it's just that this is, this is the fastest we could do it. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, thanks. So my concern on this, you know, I agree with members of, of the body who say that we've lost a lot of our city's heritage and history through development. And I'm very passionate that we save as much as we can. But I'm also passionate that we are being responsible with the money that we collect from our taxpayers and that we are not going out on spending sprees just because we have the money. That's how we got in our problems to begin with. Spend, spend, spend. Three years ago, this, this body had an opportunity to try and acquire this property at half the cost that we're looking at now. The concern is that if we don't do it now, we could end up paying more money. This should be an example for everybody that we should keep kicking things down the road, that when we do that, it gets more expensive. And our taxpayers, the ones that voted to put us here, want us to be better stewards of our money. And so I can't, even though it, I want to see this property saved, I want to see the history preserved, I can't reconcile the fact that we're paying twice as much for the same property in three years when we raise taxes on our, on our citizens in order to balance the budget, in order to get us in a good place, and now we're just spending that money. I would urge my colleagues, let this serve as an example that we should, when we have an opportunity, we should take it and not kick it down the road. Everybody, I urge you, think of the taxpayers, vote no, let this, let this property, let the state sell it to someone else. We cannot afford this. All right, thank you. Council member, council member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Just in honor of the council lady from District 29, I wanted to offer to council member Bedney, I am happy to suspend the rules to get an encroachment, a manhole. Doesn't even have to be sanitary. Um, we can do... <laughs> Do whatever here. So if, if he desires on behalf of the administration, we can do something late. Thank you, council member. Council member Stiles. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, vice mayor. Um, I wanted to speak in support of purchasing, the, purchasing this property, particularly if this is something that could be used by the Nashville School of the Arts given that that school has been in great need for some time to relocate, and this is a piece of property that they are interested in, and I did have a conversation with the director of schools last weekend and asking her if this was something that they would still be interested in, and she did express that she would be. I think in terms of our taxpayers, having our children in safe schools that are in good shape and state of the art, that's a good thing. I think we have an opportunity to move in that direction and provide them with a new location. And my English is now escaping me. Delisha, did you, is it catching? Oh, okay. So I, I would like to ask you colleagues that we consider moving forward. This is a good purchase for us. It's a good purchase for our kids. Please vote in support. I'm gonna go back to council member Johnston. You're recognized. Thank you. I think we're confusing whether we are in support of purchasing the property or not, or what this actual resolution is doing, which is requiring due diligence. It's about being informed about the decision that we're about to make, being responsible to our taxpayers of how we're, how we're going to spend their money and knowing how much money we are going to spend on this project. This doesn't, if you vote yes for this resolution, this yes on this resolution does not mean no on the acquisition of the property. It means let's find out exactly what this is going to cost, 
to restore the building and get an accurate appraisal that the state, the first appraisal the state paid for, by the way, uh, is my understanding, um, but get an accurate appraisal to get an accurate value of what it is, what the value is to us based on what we are going to use it on. This is just about educating ourselves, doing our due diligence, and making informed decisions. Um, I'm also not interested in being rushed into some huge financial decision based off of some arbitrary timeline that the state is giving us. That property has sat empty for an additional three years, and I'm pretty sure we can take however long we need, which is not in perpetuity, but a, a month or two, whatever it takes to get someone in there to tell us exactly what it's going to cost to restore this property uh, and to get an appraisal based on the cost approach so that we know what, what the value is to us. This appraisal is based on a value for a developer, for a speculative buyer. It says it in the appraisal. I've highlighted it for you in multiple areas. We are not a speculative buyer. We are not a developer. We are wanting to save the structure. I am just as passionate as anybody else in this room about preserving historic structures, 100%. That's not what this is about. This is about being fiscally responsible, and we may choose to say, you know what? Yes, this is way more than is the value to us, but we're going to uh, throw caution to the wind because apparently money is no object, and we're going to purchase this property anyway because, dang it, we want to. But at least... We need to have the information in front of us to know exactly what it is we are getting into or what we are putting the burden on the taxpayers of getting into. That's what this resolution is about. It's not about yes or no on the acquisition. It's about educating ourselves on what the scope of the project is as it relates to the fiscal note on it. Uh, Council Member Cash, you recognized. Previous question. Council Member Cash has called the previous question. Um, we're not voting on the resolution, just on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. All right, so we are voting on um, this late file resolution, which was sponsored by Council Member Johnston. Let me make sure that everybody remembers which, what, which resolution we're voting on. It's a resolution requesting inspection of the condition and cost of rehabilitation of the structure located at 88 Hermitage Avenue property uh, be made prior to the acquisition of this property by the Metropolitan Government. So we're not voting on the, the purchase of the property. We're voting on a resolution uh, to get um, the inspection of the condition and cost of rehabilitation about the piece of property prior to acquisition. Uh, we are ready to vote. And uh, I believe we're going to have to go on the board. Uh, if you're if you're for the resolution, you're going to vote uh, aye. If you're against it, you'll vote no. All right, Mr. Clerk, tell me when you're ready. ready. We are ready. Okay, we are voting on a late file resolution by Councilmember Johnston. Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. All right, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, take the vote. Close the machines, take the vote. Um, ayes 20, noes 10, two abstentions. Can you all see that on the board? No, only I can see it. All right, oh, and now it's gone. <laughs> uh, Mr. Clerk, can you read it again? Uh, 20 yes, 10 no, 2 abstain. Okay, so resolution passes. Uh, resolution passes. All right, uh, so um, we now go to, we have one more late file resolution, and then we have to go back to uh, item number three. Um, this is a late file resolution by council member uh, Sharon Hurt. Delicia Porterfield and Dave Rosenberg. It's a resolution remembering the victims of this weekend service attack at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, and condemning the action of the shooter along with the circumstances that caused it. Um, Council Member Porterfield, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do I need to ask for a committee report? Uh, Council Member Pulley, late filed. This is late filed, so uh, we ruled on the late nature, and no one on the committee had an objection to filing this late. We also, if you want this committee report now, we uh, 
uh, recommended approval eight in favor and zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Pulley. Council Member Porterfield, you need to suspend the rules. Yes, sir, I would like to move to suspend the rules. All right, so Council Member Porterfield has moved to sus suspend the rules to get this um, late file resolution before us tonight. You heard um, Council Member Pulley's report. Any objection to suspension of the rules to get this um, uh, resolution before us tonight? Seeing none, rules were suspended. You're on your resolution. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Um, I stand here with a, a heavy heart. I hate to, to have to stand under these circumstances, but this resolution is to remember the victims as well as to condemn the actions of um, the attack on Saturday, May the 14th. And um, I was talking with my, my uh, colleague here, uh, Council Member Sepulveda, and um, unfortunately we've become so, we as a society have become so desensitized to these types of events because they happen over and over and over. And um, unfortunately, uh, thoughts and prayers are not enough um, when we're talking about uh, these senseless acts. And I just want to compel our colleagues to remember that um, in addition to praying for uh, the city, because we often send thoughts and prayers, and in addition to praying for the city, we want to remember the individuals that um, that lost their lives. And, um, you know, these were, were mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, and communities are impacted and families are impacted, and they will never be the same from the, the loss of life and the loss of their friends and relatives. And um, these are individuals that uh, lost their lives doing something that we all do, um, existing, going about your day, running errands, going to the grocery store, just a simple task that, that we all do um, on a, a weekly or monthly basis. And, and unfortunately, they were uh, targeted and attacked and they lost their lives um, um, in a senseless act of hatred. So um, I ask that we all remember and just take a moment to remember the names of the victims, um, Roberta Drury, Marcus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, jo Geraldine Talley, Celestial Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, Ruth Whitfield, and that we remember their names and that we remember their family members and that we remember their community at large. And with that, uh, I would ask that we pass this um, resolution. And I would also ask that everyone that is voting in the affirmative will be signed on to the resolution. Thank you, Council Member Porterfield. Without objection, we'll do that. Uh, Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, too, stand um, in prayers and support for the victims and their families. Uh, I echo what Council Member uh, Porterfield said, but I wanted to add something else. Um, many of us don't think about it, but sometimes some of the things that we say and we do, do act to some of these hateful incidences that we see around us. Uh, what makes somebody feel like they can out someone that is different, either because of their race, their religion, their gender, or anything else, is because someone make them feel like those people are either the enemy or they're not good enough. And sometimes we say things and we do things that we don't think of but that is the end result of what I've seen over the years that is the root cause of some of these things. Sometimes it is even legislative bodies that say things and do things that you know, minimize people or, or act as if a group is not as important as another group. And it happens local, state, federal level. That's part of what is happening in our country. And so we all have a responsibility that we intentionally be mindful of what we say. We may disagree, we don't always have to agree, but at the minimum, we respect each other. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. All right, we are on Council Member uh, Porterfield's um, resolution. Um, everybody voting uh, in the affirmative would be listed as a sponsor. Any other questions? Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of this late file resolution say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Okay. All right. Um, 
All right, we now go back to item number three, RS 2022-1507 uh, by Councilmember O'Connell, Allen, and Weathers. It's a resolution approving an option agreement between the Metropolitan Government and the State of Tennessee authorized the purchase of the property located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in consultation with the administration, I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. All right, so Councilmember O'Connell has moved for a one meeting deferral, properly seconded. Any discussion on the one meeting deferral? Seeing none, um, we're ready to vote on the deferral motion. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You and I. All right, so um, it sounds like we have one, mo <coughs> one no on the deferral motion, but uh, resolution uh, is deferred, one meeting. All right, we are now ready for, um, I believe that gets us through all the late file bills. We're ready for bills on first reading. Anything needs to be uh, bumped off of first reading? All right, we'll take them all together at the same time. No objection. Uh, is there a motion to adopt? Got a motion to adopt properly. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of all bills on introduction, first reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, all bills in, in, on uh, first reading are adopted. We do have one late filed bill. It's on page um, 15 of my calendar. It's J1 BL 2022-1268. It's an ordinance adopting the 2022-2023 through 2027-2028 capital improvements budget for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. It's the official <laughs> capital improvements budget for the Metropolitan Government. Councilmember Withers, you are recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. I believe that Councilmember Allen is my co-sponsor on the capital improvements budget. Uh, we would like to move approval. We did have a discussion in the rules committee about the late filed nature. So. All right, I'm gonna go to Councilmember Pulley. Councilmember Pulley, this one came before you. Uh, yes, sir, it did. Uh, rules had no objection to the late nature of the filing. All right, uh, so uh, Councilmember Weathers, you wanna suspend the rules to get this one. You're, all you're trying to do is get it on first rating tonight. That's correct. Okay, so Councilmember Weathers uh, is moving to suspend the rules to get uh, the uh, CIB on first rating tonight. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, uh, rules are suspended. You're on your bill. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd renew my motion to approve. All right, so this is um, this first is reading. BL 2022-1268 for passage on, on first reading. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes. It is on first reading. Okay, we are now ready for bills on second reading. I'm going to go through the consent agenda. Um, all right, uh, first item up on the consent agenda on second reading is uh, item number 50, bill 2022-1189. Next one up is 1234, that's the next bill. 1235 is on consent, 1236 is on consent, 1237 is on consent, 1238 on consent, 1239 on consent, 1240 on consent, 1241 on consent, 1242 on consent. 1243 on consent, 1244 on consent, 1245 on consent, and 1246 on consent. Anything needs to be bumped off? Uh, it looked like every bill was on consent except for the first one, which was item number 49. Anything else needs to be bumped off of consent? <clears throat> All right, so um, I'm gonna read you the bills on consent, on the second reading consent calendar. Item number 50, Bill 2022-1189 by Councilmembers Murphy, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer main, sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new sanitary sewer main, manholes and easements for property located at 3800 Charlotte Avenue. Uh, BL 2022-1234 by Councilmember O'Connell, ordinance to provide for the designation of public property uh, within specified areas of downtown as a temporary special event zone during the time period be be beginning at 9 o'clock p.m. on July 2nd, 2022, ending at 11.59 p.m. on July 5th, 2022. Uh, this is in conjunction with the 2022 July 4th celebration related activities and events. Item number 52, BL 2022-1235 by Councilmembers Withers and Young, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, manholes, and easements for property located at 9828 Split Log Road in Williamson County. BL 2022-1236 by Taylor Withers and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville to abandon existing public water mains and to accept new public water mains and fire hydrant assembly for property located at 39th Avenue North. Uh, item number 54, 
Bill 2022-1237, Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing fire hydrant assemblies and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, and sanitary manholes and easements for property located at 1501 Hillside Avenue, also known as the res Reservoir Zone 7. Item number 55, Bill 2022-1238 by Roberts, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 7131 Centennial Boulevard. Bill 2022-1239, Benedict, Withers, and Young. It's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 1100 B Sunny Mead Drive, also known as Sunny Mead Commons. BL 2022-1240 by Young and Withers, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and, and sanitary sewer force mains, manholes and easements, property located at 2126 Marsha Drive, also known as Rivergate View Subdivision, BL 2022-1241, that's item number 58. Van Rees, Withers and Young, ordinance accepting the, authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 204 Ben Allen Road and 121 Hart Lane. BL 2022-1242 by Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to ban existing public sanitary sewer easement rights for property located at 3038 Lakeshore Drive. BL 2022-1243 by Lee Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, manholes and easements for property located at 1200 Cottage View, Cottage View Lane, also known as Timber Trails Phase 3. <clears throat> BL 2022-1244, Styles Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to ban existing water main and to accept new water mains, property located at 2100 Century Farms Parkway. BL 2022-1245 by Taylor Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public uh, sanitary sewer manholes, property located at Long Boulevard. And BL 2022-1246, item number 63, Styles Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept a new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements, property located at 842 Hamilton Crossings, also known as Hamilton Crossings Phase 2. Uh, those are the bills on second reading consent. Does anything need to be bumped off? Seeing none, we are ready for committee reports. <coughs> I got planning and zoning. Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and we considered items BL 2022, 1189, 1235, 1236, 1237, 1238, 1239, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. And on each of these items, we uh, recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Council Member Bradford, you had one public facilities. Public facilities voted on BL 2022-1234. Five in favor, none against for approval. All right. Council Member Evans, you had one. Public health. Vice Mayor, we considered BL 2022-1234 and voted six in favor, zero against. All right. And the last ones are transportation. Council Member Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, transportation and infrastructure recommended approval of... 1189, 1235, 1236, 1237, 1238, 1239, 1240, 1241, 1242, 1243, 1244, 1245, 1246. Uh, 10 in favor, zero against, and I'll move approval of the second reading consent agenda. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Young. He's moved approval of the second reading consent agenda properly seconded. Any discussion on the second reading consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, second reading consent agenda passes. We go back to the first bill, item number 49. This is by Councilmember Benedict. Uh, ordinance approving a lease agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Board of Education and East End Prep. Councilmember Benedict, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <coughs> Committee reports, please. All right, I got one from Budget and Finance. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended a one meeting deferral, six in favor, zero against. Okay. Um, Councilmember Withers, Park, uh, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning also uh, considered this item and recommended a one meeting deferral, uh, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. And then Education, Councilmember Lee. Anybody's got the. Um... Oh, there she is. Councilmember Lee, you all right? There you go. Oh. Yes, sir. Right. Um, no, I'm not right. Um, Bill 1169, we approved seven, four, and zero. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we move to defer for one meeting, seven, four, and zero against. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Lee. Councilmember Benedict, you're recognized on your bill. 
<laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. So um, I'm gonna move another one meeting deferral on this. I did receive word from the administration that uh, MNPS was able to improve the lease per my, um, uh, to, per my review with them. So we will have an amended lease in front of us in the next meeting. I do believe as the result of this uh, that it is the third deferral, so it will be indefinitely deferred as the result of the deferral tonight. I intend to introduce it so it will be on the calendar at the next meeting. And um, the lease, of course, should be amended at that point. So that's what we'll have in front of the body. So I renew my motion for a one meeting deferral tonight. Thank All you. All right. So Councilmember Benedict has moved for a one meeting deferral properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the deferral motion passes. All right, that should get us through second reading. We're now on bills on third reading. Uh, there is a lot of them. Let's see how many we got. Uh, BL 2022-1073, the first one, item 64, is on consent. Uh, 1100 is on consent. 1101, on consent. 1164 on consent, 1191 on consent, 1192 on consent, 1193 on consent, 1194 on consent, 1195 on consent, 1196 on consent, 1197 on consent, 1200 on consent, 1201 on consent, 1202 on consent, 1203 on consent, 1206 on consent, 1208 on consent, 1209 is on consent, 1211 is on consent, 1213 is on consent, 1214 is on consent, 1215 is on consent, 1217 is on consent. <coughs> 1218 is on consent, 1219 is on consent, 1220 is on consent, 1221 is on consent, 1222 on consent, 1223 on consent, 1224 on consent, 1225 on consent, 1226 on consent, 1227 on consent, 1228 on consent, 1229 on consent. Council member Toombs is recognized. I need to pull number 85, 1209. Yeah, that's what I thought. So item 85, 2022-1209 uh, is taken off of consent. Anything else needs to become off, uh, needs to come off of consent? <coughs> mm -hmm. okay. All right. <coughs> so I'm going to read you all a story now. Okay. All right. Good. <clears throat> okay, we're also taking item, um, let's see, where is it? It's item 69, 1164 is coming off of consent. All right, here we go. BL 2022-1073, Cash, Evans, Allen, and others, an ordinance uh, amending section 17, uh, just a number of sections in Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code to delete the daycare home use, create new daycare home small and daycare home large uses, and to update the requirements for opening a daycare home or daycare center use. Uh, BL 2022-1100 by Council Member Rosenberg. Ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by amending a specific plan for properties located at 5754 River Road and River Road unnumbered. It's approximately 750 feet west of Charlotte Pike, zoned SP, R40 and R80 at 16.47 acres. Uh, next item is BL 2022-1101 by Council Member Rosenberg. That's the companion bill. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 5754 River Road and River Road unnumbered. Uh, the proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. <coughs> uh, the next two we skip. Uh, next three we skip. Next four we skip. Uh, item number 71, BL 2022-1191 by Council Member Toombs. Uh, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1190. Uh, which is a proposed specific plan zoning district uh, located at 2405 Plum Street, 2600 and 2604 Dickerson Pike. 
Plum Street and Dickerson Pike unnumbered, northwest corner of Rock Street and Dickerson Pike. Uh, that's the proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricting the construction, restricting the construction of the buildings. BL 2022 1192 by Hager, uh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the 4130 Andrew Jackson Parkway specific plan district located at 4130 Andrew Jackson Parkway. Approximately 950 feet north of Chandler Road, 2.04 acres, zone specific plan. Um, item number 73, BL 2022-1193, by Stiles, an ordinance to amend Title 17, uh, by applying a historic landmark overlay district, probably located at 5797 Mount View Road. Uh, BL 2022-1194, item number 74, Council Member Stiles. That's her companion bill. Uh, proposed historic landmark overlay district to include properties located at 5797 Mount View Road. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. BL 2022-1195 by Council Member Stiles. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a, a neighborhood landmark overlay district to property located at 5797 Mount View Road. It's approximately 1,050 1, feet southwest of the Mount View Circle. Zone AR2A is 1.11 acres. Council Member Toombs, BL 2022-1196, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from, from CL to SP zoning for properties located at 1400 Brick Church Pike at the corner of uh, Arctic Avenue and Brick Church Pike. It's 1.61 acres. Uh, BL 2022-1197 by Council Member Young, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from SCS to SP zoning for property located at 400 Edenwold Road, approximately 1,000 feet east of Gallatin Pike. It's 1.08 acres. Uh, BL 2022 1200 by Council Member Swope. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RO2A, RM4, and RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 50, 6578 Bluff Road and Bluff Road unnumbered. It's approximately 275 feet north of Stone Bluff Drive, 62.2 acres. BL 2022 1201, that's the companion bill. Council Member Swope. Um, it's a proposed specific plan zoning district located at 6578 Bluff Road and Bluff Road unnumbered, approximately 275 feet north of Stone Bluff Drive. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. BL 2022-1202, item number 80 by Council Member Taylor. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning. Property located at 2401 Meharry Boulevard at the corner of 24th Avenue North and Meharry Boulevard. Item number 81, BL 2022-1203 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IWD to MUGNS zoning for property located at 230 Cumberland Bend, approximately 860 feet east of Great Circle Road, 4.96 acres. BL 2022 by Council Member Taylor. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from OG to OR, ORIA zoning for property located at 405B, 31st Avenue North, approximately 160 feet north of Charlotte Avenue. Uh, next item is item number 84, BL 2022 by Council Member Benedict. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to R10 zoning for property located at 1308 Cardinal Avenue, approximately 310, 10, 310 feet east of Kennedy Avenue. Uh, item number 86, BL 2022, 1211 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IWD to OR20 NS zoning for property located at 2115 24th Avenue North, approximately 325 feet north of Clarksville Pike. It's 0. 60 acres. Uh, next item is 87, BL 2022, 1213 by Young and Stiles. Ordinance amending Chapter 6.81 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding booting services. Uh, and item number 88, BL 2022, 1214, Allen, Young, Syracuse, and Benedict. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code of Laws to authorize the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into participation and maintenance agreements with developers for infrastructure projects via resolution. Item number 89 by Allen and Hancock, BL 2022, 1215. Ordinance amending Title 16 by adding uh, Section 16.04177 and amending Section 16.12.2. 220, 16.16.400, 16.20.250, and 16.28.110 relating to fee schedules for building permits, gas mechanical permits, plumbing permits, electrical permits, as well as fees relating to inspections and reinspections and examination of uh, plans, refunds, as well as administrative fees and other fees charged by the Department of Codes Administration. Item number 90 by Allen and Hancock, BL 2022 1217, ordinance approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Oracle for hosting services of B business. Suite R12 and PeopleSoft Pension Calculation Systems. Uh, BL 2022 1218, item number 91, O'Connell, Allen, and others. Ordinance uh, authorizing the Metropolitan Government uh, through Water and Sewer Services to enter into an agreement with 804 14th Avenue North LLC to provide improved public sanitary sewer services through the construction of an improved stormwater system. Uh, BL 2022 1219 by Hager, Withers, and Young. 
and the next couple are going to be by Hather, Hager, Withers, and Young. These are ordinances authorized the Metropolitan Government uh, to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for two properties located at Chandler Road, also known as Chandler Reserve Phase 1. It's the same thing for BL 2022-1220. It's an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept water and sewer san sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies uh, for two properties located at Tr Chandler Road, also known as Chandler Reserve Phase 2, BL 2022-1221, Hager, Withers, and Young. Uh, the same thing, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept, accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and so forth. For two properties located at Chandler Road, unnumbered, Chandler Reserve phase number three, BL 2022-1222, same sponsors. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon exist, existing sanitary sewer mains and easements and to accept new ones, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. For two properties located at Chandler Road, unnumbered, also known as Chandler Reserve phase four, uh, BL 2022-1223, item number 96, Hager, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. Two properties located at Chandler Road, unnumbered. Chandler Reserve, phase number five. BL 2022-1224, Hager, Withers, and Young. Same thing. This is uh, two properties located at Chandler Road, unnumbered, also known as Chandler Reserve, phase number six. Uh, BL 2022-1225, Sepulveda, Sepulveda, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to accept the re relocation replacement of a fire hydrant assembly and permanent easement for two properties located at 4323 Old Goins Road and 4337 Goins Road. BL 2022-1226, item number 99, Taylor, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manholes for property located on 2109 Buchanan Street. BL 2022-1227, O'Connell, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville to relocate a public fire hydrant assembly for property located at 800 Monroe Street. BL 2022-1228, Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent easements for the Vall Lane Stormwater Improvement Project for three properties located at 2601 Vall Lane and 799 and 799 B Montrose Avenue. And the last bill is BL 2022-1229, Swope, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing stormwater easement rights for property located at 681 Old Hickory Boulevard. Anything needs to be bumped off of that consent calendar. Would you like for me to read it again? Got it. Okay. All right. Let me get some uh, committee reports in here. Um, uh, Affordable Housing Councilmember Parker, uh, you've got two. Councilmember Parker, you've got two on the third reading consent agenda. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Let me track my. Uh, it's 11, 1121 down. and 1122. I've got it here. So on 1121, uh, we recommended the Henderson Amendment 640 against, the Gamble Amendment 640 against, and the bill as amended with both 64 and 0 against. That's okay. Uh, you know what? Those aren't even on consent agenda because uh, they're amendments. So that's, I'll come that's back. That's what to I you. thought. Thank yeah. you. I don't know what they're doing on here, but that's okay. All right. The only other ones are on planning and zoning. Councilmember Withers, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and we considered items BL 2022 1073, 1191, and we recommended approval of each of those seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, let's see. Can I get them all? That's right. All right. Uh, and if you would, Councilman Withers, a, a motion to approve the third reading consent agenda. I would like to move the consent agenda for right, the third Council reading. All right, Councilman Withers has moved the third reading consent agenda. Council Member Young seconds. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the third reading consent agenda say aye. Opposed, no. Third reading consent agenda passes. All right, uh, we've got just a few bills left on uh, that need to be taken up. Um, first one looks like it's item number 67. It is bill 2022-1121 by council members Henderson, Murphy, Withers, and others. Ordinance to amend title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, to amend chapter 17.12, 17.24, 17.28, 17.36, and 17.40 pertaining to the cluster lot option uh, Councilmember Henderson, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. 
committee reports, please. All right, so um, Councilman Parker, you've got affordable housing on this one. And uh, on this one, on 1121, we voted six in favor of the Henderson event Amendment, six in favor of the Gamble Amendment, six in favor of uh, the bill as amended, and none against on any of those votes. All right, thank you. Planning and zoning, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met, and we considered uh, Councilmember Henderson's amendment and recommended seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. We also considered Councilmember Gamble's amendment and recommended seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. And finally, the ordinance uh, as amended with both, uh, should they both be offered, but uh, with both uh, amendments, um, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, thank you. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized on your bill. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move my amendment, please. If you'd like to move your amendment? With a brief explanation, okay. yes. So, Council Member Henderson, it's amendment number one to the second substitute, which is making the bill. Council Member Henderson has moved amendment number one, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, colleagues, this sets an effective date of September 14th. Uh, this is at the request of the Planning Commission, and I concurred as we're moving to a new model uh, for subdivision development, um, uh, centering our uh, natural resources and that conservation. Uh, we want to make sure that nobody in process is kind of caught in the middle. Um, and so with staff's assessment, um, they believed that this would be the best uh, time uh, per the planning filing deadlines and also for us to kind of stand up the, the new process and the staffing necessary for it. So the amendment sets an effective date of September 14th. And with that, I would renew my motion to amend. All right, you've heard the explanation of the amendment. Council Mayor Henderson has moved the amendment. Any discussion on uh, the uh, amendment number one? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of amendment number one, to bill 2022-1121, it's actually an amendment to uh, the second substitute which makes the bill. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the amendment passes. The first amendment goes on. Uh, there is a second amendment. Do you yes. want to handle that? Vice Mayor, with no objection, I would also like to move uh, the friendly amendment offered by Council Lady Gamble. All right, so Council Member Henderson has moved amendment number two to the second substitute, properly seconded by Council Member Gamble, uh, Council Member Hem Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Council Lady uh, Gamble uh, for offering um, the amendment that uh, addresses some of her concerns that as we move to uh, a new model uh, for uh, cluster lot, um, that sometimes we do have circumstances wherein, um, given the, the natural resources and so forth that we're preserving, um, it, it, it was not contemplated that uh, that uh, play structures or uh, sport courts and so forth um, would count uh, towards uh, our, our natural uh, resource uh, space um, as a, by way of trade-off for uh, the clustering. Um, and she felt strongly that that was something that needed to still be included. Um, and uh, I am okay with that. And um, so with that, I would uh, please move that amendment. All right. So, uh Council Member Henderson again has moved amendment number two to the second substitute. On BL 2022 1121, uh, it was properly seconded. You've heard the explanation. Any questions about amendment number two? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. We're voting on amendment number two to the second substitute. All those in favor of amendment number two say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment, amendment number two goes on. We've had two amendments go on. That's it for the amendments. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized on your bill as, sec, as substituted, second substitute with two amendments on it. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move approval, please. All right, Councilmember Henderson has moved approval, properly seconded, discussion on the bill. Seeing none, we're ready to vote on uh, the bill as amended. Um, a second substitute as amended. We're ready to vote on BL 2022-1121. All those in favor of the bill for passage on third reading say aye. Opposed, no. The bill passes. Thank you, Council Mayor Henderson. You've also got the next one. BL 2022-1122. Henderson, Murphy, Withers, and others in ordinance to amend titles 2 and 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend chapter 17.24 and 17.28 
pertaining to tree protection replacement and to amend chapters 2.226, 17.04, 17.12, 17.20, 17.24, 17.28, and 17.40 to make associated housekeeping amendments, all of which are described within the bill. Councilmember Henderson, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. I've got affordable housing. Councilmember Parker. Affordable housing considered the substitute bill um, voted seven in favor of the Henderson Amendment and then seven in favor of the bill as amended. All None right. opposed. All right. Thank you. Planning and Zoning Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning considered um, Council Member Henderson's amendment and recommended seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, and also the bill as amended, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Thank you. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized on your bill. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to uh, move the amendment um, and by way of brief explanation, it is the same September 14th effective date um, that was uh, described for 11-21 uh, um, as these are associated bills traveling together and um, they work together. So. Okay, so uh, Council Member Henderson has moved amendment number one. She also explained it properly seconded discussions on the amendment. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of amendment number one on BL 2022-1122 say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment's adopted. Councilman Henderson, you're on your bill now as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would move approval. Councilmember Henderson moves approval, properly seconded. Uh, we are ready to vote on BL 2022-1122 as amended by Councilmember Henderson. Seeing nobody in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, BL 2022, 1122, as amended, passes on third reading. Thank you, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, uh, We are on item number 69, BL 2022, 1164, by Council Member Sledge, O'Connell, Hauser, and others. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 9.30 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to construction sites. Council Member O'Connell, uh, I believe this one is yours now. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I believe um, Mr. Sledge is out. Uh, ill this evening and uh, he had asked uh, to have this deferred and definitely he does plan to bring it back uh, when he is back uh, and in good health. Okay. So the motion is to defer this one indefinitely. All right. Properly seconded. Uh, discussions on the deferral. It's a deferral indefinitely. Seeing no discussion, motion to defer indefinitely. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion passes. This one's deferred indefinitely. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, item number 70, uh, Councilmember Toombs, BL 2022-1190. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS and IWD to SP zoning for properties located at 2405 Plum Street, 2600 and 2604 Dickerson Pike. Plum Street unnumbered, Dickerson Pike unnumbered, northwest corner of Rock Street and Dickerson Pike. It's 5.22 acres, permit a 349-unit multifamily residential development. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met and considered this ordinance, Bill 2022 1190. There is an amendment. We recommended approval of the amendment, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, as well as uh, the bill as amended, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Thank you, Council Member Withers. Mm -hmm. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment. All right. So Council Member Toombs has moved amendment number one. It's in your packet to Bill 2022-1190. Uh, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Uh, it is an amendment from planning staff amending some of the conditions. Mr. Lehman, can you answer this one? So just what the amendment does. The amendment uh, allows for flexibility in terms of the uh, access. So when the final site plan is submitted, um, we've talked to the applicant about possible alternatives to the design that's proposed in the, the bill that's going forward. And we're comfortable with those, those modifications. And so just to cross our T's and dot our I's, we put the amendment in so that it, there's no conflict with the current plan. Okay. All right, Council Member Toombs. Move for approval. Council Member Toombs has moved for approval of the, the amendment. Okay. Uh, again, it was properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, ready to vote. Uh, we're voting on the amendment to Bill 2022-1190. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. You're on your bill as amended. 
Move for approval as amended. Council Member Toombs has moved for approval of Bill 2022-1190 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, Bill 2022-1190 for passage uh, as amended on passes on third reading. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, the, the bill passes, motion passes. We are now on um, uh, item number 83. Uh, Bill 2022-1207, also by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IWD to MUG zoning for property located at 210 Cumberland Bend, approximately 1,160 feet east of Great Circle Road, 5.04 acres. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Withers, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered Ordinance Bill 2022-1207. There is a proposed substitute. We recommended approval of the substitute, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, and the ordinance as substituted, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Thank you, Council Member Withers. Council Member Toombs, back to you. Thank you. Move approval of the substitute. All right. So Council Member Toombs is moving approval of the substitute, properly seconded back to you for explanation of the substitute. The substitute adds the NS designation to prohibit short-term rentals. Okay, so you've heard an explanation of the substitute. Um, again, it's been properly seconded. Any discussion, any questions about the substitute? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on the substitute to Bill 2022-1207. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's ab adopted. You're on your bill as substitute. Move for approval as substituted. Council Member Toombs has moved for approval of Bill 2022-1207 as substituted, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill, your bill, Bill 2022-1207 as substituted, passes on third and final reading. And I believe our last bill, right? Item number 85, BL 2022-1209, also by Council Member Toombs, ordinance to amend Title 17 by, challenge, by changing from RS 7.5 to R8 zoning for property located at Monticello Drive, unnumbered approximately 800 feet, 800 feet north of West Trinity Lane, 1.33 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Withers, planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered Ordinance Bill 2022-1209. Our committee recommended deferral one meeting at the request of the sponsor, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, I actually want to move uh, for a deferral for two meetings. Two meetings. All right. So the motion is to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Uh, any questions? Any discussion? The motion is to defer two meetings. All those in favor of the deferral for two meetings say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The deferral uh, motion passes. Uh, I, we should have said at the beginning, Council Member Roberts uh, had knee replacement surgery. So uh, just there she is. She's uh, changed quite a bit. Um, so uh, we're wishing her, wishing her, uh, wishing her well wishes. Um, and um, I need a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Got a motion to adjourn. Properly second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. <laughs> and so the council has concluded about a two hour and 40 minute meeting tonight. Uh, a 38 page long agenda, of about 102 pieces of legislation. They, the most consequential legislation tonight were three bills passed on first reading. One was the $2.96 billion operating budget for Metro that's been proposed by Mayor John Cooper. Also, the other bill, one of the other bills, sets the tax levy for the property taxes in both the Urban Service and General Services District in Davidson County. Those rates are the same as they were last year. New budget goes into effect along with those tax rates on July 1st. Bills passed routinely tonight. The council will now spend the next couple of days, a couple of weeks, uh, studying the budget and the Budget and Finance Committee. There'll be multiple sessions about this. There'll be a public hearing on this, uh, on both the tax levy on the, and the operating budget and the capital improvements budget when the council meets again uh, at its next meeting on uh, June 7th. Uh, the capital budget, by the way, is just a planning document, uh, but it does include uh, the new Titan Stadium and also money for the East Bank, so there may be some comment about that as well. Again, capital 
budget doesn't spend any money, but any project the city does has to have it in there. Council also uh, argued quite a bit tonight over a couple of different pieces of legislation about an option agreement uh, between Metro and the state of Tennessee for Metro to purchase property located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. Uh, that's about three acres. Metro would like to use it as a park. Uh, the value of the property, the state wants $20.3 million for it. Uh, the, the city turned down buying it for $11 million a couple of years ago, excuse me, uh, a, couple of, a couple of years ago. Um, some council members are concerned about the difference in that, especially since it's also valued on the assessor property website at only $14.4 million. Um, at the end of the day, the council approved a, a resolution, a late resolution, that basically would stop going forward until there's been a, some kind of study done to see that the... Uh, acquisition, uh, it, the due diligence is done about that so that uh, people can make sure that, uh, that what it's going to cost to rehabilitate the property, particularly since there's a historic property on there. Metro was going to buy it before, and this is the old School for the Blind uh, building, uh, uh, to use for a park. So all that got mixed up with that as well. The council members are concerned about that. So the bill was uh, to, to do anything about that, uh, other than the resolution passing tonight, the bill has been uh, deferred for the next meeting. Council had a number of memorializing, a number of uh, uh, small resolutions that would approve money to uh, spend some money on, uh, for example, with uh, with NOAA to conduct a scientific field mapping study of 100 square miles within Nashville to see what's going on in terms of intense heat build up in some parts of the, the urban area that's being caused by the built environment. Med Council also approved a number of things to spend some American rescue funds or at least send in a plan for how to spend over $9 million in rescue funds, including $6.7 million for the development of affordable rental housing. Council also approved uh, a late resolution that uh, also uh, condemns the hate crime that it appeared that had the mass shooting that appeared in Buffalo, New York this week, and also commemorating the 10 victims who lost their lives in that. Council had a number of moralizing resolutions tonight. They were all approved by the council. On second reading, the council uh, for again deferred indefinitely. In this, in this case, deferred indefinitely a, a lease agreement with Metro Charter Schools. Apparently, there's more changes being made to the lease. The council has not been happy with some of the leases that have come in. One was approved uh, with these. One was withdrawn. Another failed to receive 21 votes for approval. This will be coming back, but it'll be on the agenda next time. But, but anything that's definitely deferred. Is calculation system. Uh, the council's approval was needed on that because this is considered a sole source contract, meaning Metro's purchasing have, have uh, Metro purchasing officials have determined that Oracle is the only sole source for these services in this area. On third reading, the council also uh, uh, deferred indefinitely a uh, final passive bill that would further regulate outdoor construction sites. That means the bill will come back uh, in the future, perhaps in two weeks, perhaps another meeting after that. Again, it'll have to be deferred before it goes back on the agenda to be worked on. Council, in the early part of the meeting tonight, also uh, uh, had a high delegation, a high-level delegation from uh, Kurdistan in town. I think earlier I identified a different country at the beginning of the meeting. Kurdistan would like this. Uh, Kurdistan would like to have a sister city relationship with Nashville as it does in several other places. The council was very interested in that. Uh, one of the, the governor of that area uh, was there and, and made a speech to the council tonight with a translator. The council also earlier had a delegation of local uh, youth that are going to be going down to the sister city in South America. The council would ask them to come back later and make a report to them after they've been and taken that. Then they also swore them in as duly authorized uh, representatives of the city of Nashville when they can take their trip down there, which I think will begin in the next few days. The council is now in recess for three weeks. They meet again on Tuesday, June 7th. Again, that'll be the night for the public hearing on the budget, both the, both the operating budget. Council Chambers. Tonight's meeting the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the Council Chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.
Think about it. Think about it.
bass kick. Think about it.